love that. Rudy just went into a massive panic. Say, Rudy, got to get used to working with me. I don't give a rat's ass <laughs> wherever on time. I'm going to be honest. I had no idea we were on air. <laughs> well, we weren't yet. They were still doing the intro. Oh, okay. We were fine. Yeah, like, see, that was the thing. Matter of fact, kind of by coincidence, Brittany and I were just talking about all the things that people get whipped up about in radio. Couldn't give a rat's ass about any of them. Well, why did you, you stepped on my, it's a show. Calm down. Right? I, I mean, it's nice to know a little when we're on air. Yeah, that's kind of part of being on a radio show Why is knowing bother? what. bother? <laughs> Who cares? But I'm with you. I like that, like, if it's one of us go to anyway, the bathrooms or go sits in the hallway, yeah, we're fine. We're fine. Who can, whatever. We're fine. Oh, yeah, it's, a, it's a podcast. Oh, you know, matter of fact, it's a good thing, I guess, in a way, we kind of started like this. Hmm. Over the weekend, I ran into, I, and every weekend it's more and more people, and I'm, I'm assuming the same with you guys. I run into more and more people that want to listen to the show but don't know how to do it. And some, most of those people, I would say, are between the ages of about 25 and 45. So you would think they would know how to do that. But they've just never done it before, I guess. But, but there's this one woman that was in the neighborhood yesterday, very, very pleasant. She's a huge listener to the show, right? Mm-hmm. And so I was explaining to her how to do it. You just go to the app store. And is there somewhere we can... Like, put up a tutorial on that whole thing? Or do we have a tutorial on it already? Yeah, there's a few videos that you can find online. But, we... I mean, if, if there's somewhere we can put it that people would be able to just go to the site and... I think we should have, uh, you know, how to do it on our website so mm-hmm. people can go... Because everybody knows how to get on a website, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, Brittany has this amazing jingle that is very catchy. Download the app and you can listen live. See? See? That's what they said was driving them away. <laughs> no. Um, you guys, <clears throat> I feel like I sounded good. Am I? Mm-hmm. It's very in oh key. <laughs> it was I, perfect. Should I leave you guys for like? Yeah, you're such a radio person. That God, aren't I terrific? Didn't I sound kind of good? That's such a radio and TV thing to say. <laughs> aren't I great? Aren't I talented? <laughs> God. Je- yeah, that's it. I almost called you Justin Rudy. Rudy, yes. today Tom goes, you know, I never complain. And I go, do you never complain? He goes, well, I never complain about you. And I was like, you never complain about me. And he goes, well, sometimes I complain about you. Well, we got there eventually. <laughs> that's how you work things out. We did. We did. We worked it's together on that. I got kind of, I feel kind of weird today because my wife is leaving town again for a week and I'm not, why, I hate that so much I can't even tell you. But like you're mourning it and it hasn't even happened yet. It doesn't matter. I hate being at my house without my wife. I just hate it. She won't leave until later in this week, right? No, she's leaving this morning. I think she's leaving like right now. Oh, no wonder. I'm just telling you, it's one of those situations where... Or a lot of guys, I suppose, would be having parties. And I suppose if I still drank or if I was a drug addict or something, maybe I'd be happy. If you were a drug addict, maybe, you know, maybe you'd be I don't happy. Know. I'm trying to think. There was a radio salesperson who worked in the uh, the old building when it was ABC. I'm trying to remember the guy's name. And he's since then he has now become clean and sober, which is not is you know totally fine to tell this story. But yeah. how he ended up having to go to rehab was he dropped his wife off at the airport. Oh yeah, and. He went home and turned his phone off, Whoops. and she the flight got canceled. She was trying to call, never oh. couldn't get a hold of him. Oh. So she took a cab back to the house, and when she walked in, there he was sitting on the couch, buck naked with a line of cocaine in front of him, drunk and watching porn. And his wife was like, all right, you got to go to rehab. And he was like, ah, yeah, I should probably go to rehab. He she, really went hard immediately. <laughs> immediately. She had no idea that he was an addict. Like, that's how good of an addict oh, he was. He's hiding God. it from her for years. And he's like, oh, by the way, I got like, and then he just started like unraveling all of these of demons course. out of his closet. But I can't remember who the guy was, but he's told that story many times. You will never work as hard as you do hiding all that shit yeah, from people you live I with. Suppose, yeah. Like. That's a full-time on a top of a full-time job. Mm-hmm. I bet that's true. I bet it's really, really hard. See, now let me ask you a few questions about the co- First of all, I only did cocaine once in my life, and it did absolutely nothing for me. That makes me wonder what your brain chemistry is like. Mm-hmm. Or if it was just fake in the first place. I mean, because not all stuff that's sold as cocaine is cocaine, right? That's true. You're sniffing up like a couple of like Smarties just crushed up on a table. Talcum powder, mm-hmm. whatever the hell it is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did it once in my life. So I don't even know what it feels like because I just think, well, but what it told me was if it was fake, why would I want to take that chance again? Yeah, right. You know what I mean? It could have been something really bad, mm-hmm. right? 
Uh, so you put a little fentanyl in there or some deal. Yeah. So, but there wasn't any fentanyl back then. This was a long, long time mm-hmm. ago. But but here's my question about that whole thing. So so this guy, and I'm not judging him. You live your life. I got no problem with that. And if he was a drunk and a drug addict, it made it much easier to do. I have no interest in going home by myself, sitting naked, snorting coke, and watching porn. You for yeah. How boring is that? I mean, sounds. Like, I mean, it depends on the day of the week, right? Like a Monday, it's not too oh, bad. Okay, okay. Yeah, fr- save your porn watching for Thursdays and Fridays. Yeah, yeah okay. towards the end of the week. Yeah. I just, what is in it for you when you're watching porn? That's the part I've never understood. I say, hey, look at there's an attractive woman that's got a uh, plunger up her butt. I, who cares? Plungers, Plung- thank you. Oh, well, then yeah. maybe I'd tune in. Yeah, also, what kind of porn are you watching? My God. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't watch porn. I've never been a big porn watcher. I've watched it in my lifetime, of course. And I'm not judging anybody who does watch it. I literally, maybe I'm so selfish, I go, well, there's nothing in this for me. Why do I want to do this? I don't know. I just watched the first episode of Bup Kiss, which is Pete Davidson's oh, yeah. TV show. There's a scene right at the beginning it's so stupid. Like, they want it to be so funny, and it just wasn't. And he's wearing these Oculus, and it's right at the beginning, so it's not that big of a spoiler. But he's wearing these Oculus, um, you know. VR glasses? VR, you know, glasses, oh, yeah. the like video yep. game thing. Yep. And he's watching porn on that. And uh, at that same time, his mom's coming down with his laundry. And there may have been DNA spread on her at oh, that moment. Gee. Oh, I know it was trying so hard. And like, yeah. I'm not, a. I was just like, this is, this is trying so hard. Um, there was a funny line after though, about her not wanting to change shirts. Cause she was going to work out anyway, yeah, that's pretty, that's funny. <laughs> which that was funny, <laughs> but the whole circumstance was just so ridiculous. But yeah, I think now they're getting into, I don't know if it exists, but uh 3d porn, so, oh, yeah, good for them. That's the deal. So, basically, you're saying that opening scene was just like every other bit he's ever done. He is one of the most unfunny human beings I have ever seen. What is the attraction of this guy? See, I don't know. And is, I, he, is, he, is he funny sometimes? I think he's funny sometimes. Um, I watched his stand up, and I would say it wasn't amazing, but there were right. funny jokes in it. His ability to, um, like, it was right after the Ariana Grande breakup. His ability to tap into how depressed he is and vocalize it, I love that. But like his is jokes, that funny? I, what what is do, like as a stand-up comedian, do people think of him more of a joke because he's never really worked continuously at it? No, no, because he actually has been a stand-up for a long time, a okay. long time. That was where it all started for him, you know. Obviously, it's uh, as Kristen Burt said. Pete Davidson has a big dick. See? Well, that's, there you go. the whole deal. That's what it is. That's He's got true. that BDE. Yeah. I always, and I'm not kidding. I'm not trying to be a pain in the ass here. Well, maybe a little bit I am. I think you are. The first time I saw him, I thought he was wearing, like, a Halloween costume. He has the biggest mouth of any living human I've ever seen. Yeah. My God, those things go from ear to ear. And, like, I, like, full disclosure, I don't care. I like him. Like, per- well, personally, some people do. I, mean, I like him. I think he's cute. I think he's funny. I think, like, I like him. But I don't always think his jokes are great. But I'm going to give Bupkiss at least a couple more episodes because yeah. later there were some funny jokes. Well, so, I mean, that's it. Look, that's the other thing I will tell you about. about I do have an understanding, a very clear understanding. Just because you think it's funny and I don't doesn't mean it's not funny. Yeah. I mean, you, you like what you like, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the biggest problem I got, and I know it's a huge problem, there will never be another Richard Pryor, and therefore very few people are funny to me. So you're just giving up? That man was brilliant. Yeah, I think in hindsight, though, that's when you find out that yeah, who the Richard Pryors There's really, really wrong. Will. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, because I think we have modern-day people. Like, somebody <laughs> once pointed out, like, hey, I wasn't alive when Shakespeare was around, but right. I am alive when Bill Burr is here. So I'm trying to appreciate Bill it. Burr's good. And I'm like, yeah, yep. I totally get that, you know? He'll yep. be one of the guys on that Mount Rushmore of comedians that we look back on and go, I'm so glad that he did what he did and just totally skewed our point of view on things. Yeah, I mean, change comedy forever. There's no question. Richard Pratt, much like Lenny Bruce, change comedy forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no question about that whole deal. Um, and that's the whole thing. You live your life. You yeah. live your own. So different things are interesting or funny or whatever to you. That makes sense. Yeah, like I hate leaning into the narrative of like, even sometimes, Rudy, when you go on like your, these YouTube stars are not stand-up comedians. It's like, 
It feels very that gen we don't like the next generation's comedy, mm -hmm. which like I am guilty of saying with things sometimes too, and I agree yeah. with you, but I also have that moment of going, ooh, are we just getting mad at like whatever the new thing is because it's not marketed for us? Yeah, getting angry at the VCR because you don't know how to program it. Or like, there you go. Yeah, or you know, like their music still are sucks. VCRs. Yeah, well, it's just like, yeah, because it, whatever the d thing that comes up behind us, we think it's dumb yeah, and lame. Yeah, because it's not for us. Yeah. Like, I don't know. You know this all the time constantly. It's like, nothing's going to be as good as my generation music. And at some point when you were younger, your parents were like, this is not music. This is crap. Well, there's no question about yeah. that. Well, I do remember my when I was like three, I think I was. My father came home and was barking at my sister, Bobby, who's seven years older than me. You don't know anything about music at all. Your music is terrible, screaming and yelling and blah, blah, blah. This is a great song. He puts a 45 on the old turntable, and it's Love Me Tender by Elvis Presley. <laughs> he had no idea it was the same person. Sure. He had no clue. That's right. so funny. I mean, it's great, isn't it? Isn't it's it? Like, yeah. Oh, you're right, Dad. I should listen to Elvis Presley. Mm -hmm. How do you pronounce his name? Okay, <laughs> yeah, cool. Exactly. But yeah, I understand what you're saying. There's a lot, there are different experiences. I mean, you guys, and that's why I think this show is set up well, because we're basic, not really three, I'd say what, two and a half generations, I guess, something like that. Yeah. Not, not three full generations. No. But I think that's a good thing. So everybody kind of gets a voice at it, right? I love that, yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the other thing. Just because I think it's hilarious, I do not insist that everybody else no. thinks it's hilarious. But I a lot do. of people like that. If you don't think that's funny, you're an idiot. It's like, what? Yeah, or if you think that's funny, you're an yeah, idiot. Yeah, yeah, right, right. You don't want to ick anyone's yum. Yeah, although I did have family members at our cabin one time who were falling out of their chairs watching Jeff Dunham, who I think is fine. I don't I'm, get it either. I, I don't, I'm not a huge fan. I don't, I don't get, get it. it. I don't get the puppet thing, whatever, fine. Nope. But they were cackling with laughter, and I'm just watching it going, I don't get it. Immediately afterwards on Comedy Central, they're like, coming up next, Brian Regan. I was like, oh, okay, guys, <laughs> now watch a real comedian. And everybody sat there silently watching Brian Regan going, I don't get it. I'm like, this is why I don't come to Thanksgiving. This, this is, is why I, I yeah. hate you guys. Yeah. No, just kidding. This um, is why I hate you guys. That's pleasant. I'm joking. No, you're we're not. Talking I about... saw a serious look on your face. My face is because it's all the Botox. Um... <laughs> oh, that's nice. Well, it is nice if that's what happened. Anyway. No, I think that's funny. And it's probably funny, too, when you're like going like, well, you guys, like this is something I do. I whatever. They're like, no, no. this is our thing. Mm -hmm. We love it. But let me ask you a question. How, is, how have things changed? Because you can go back to my, stuff my grandmother liked. And I can understand how some of that's funny. My mother was funny as hell, but had no sense of humor. And I still don't understand. How could she be funny, but she had no sense of humor at all? It's the Jonah Hill basically was the one who had said, to be funny, you have to not be funny. You have to be so serious I, about true, things true. that it becomes funny. It actually, on the other side, yeah, is yeah. where you find the humor of it. Yep. Because if somebody is just like free, like having an interaction about a bagel... Yeah. It, it's not the fact that it's a bagel. It's the fact that they are so pissed off that there is no cream cheese for the bagel that them being angry yeah. now becomes the thing that is funny. Yeah. Now I'm going to have to go through this with him, too. I went through it with Alex. I went through it with Andy. It's bagel, not bagel. I knew bagel. you were going to say that. I well, hate it when people say bagel. I, say, I think I say bagel. <laughs> My kids, what, I'll say what, they, Why? What did I say? You said bagel. Bagel? Yeah. Oh. Almost everybody from northern Minnesota says bagel. Oh, I don't know. They're... So I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying this party, it's... that's how you heard it. He, right. Tom has once attacked me when I was doing... Attacked you? Attacked. I felt okay. attacked. I had to go to a safe space. Um, I was reading some some ad, whatever, and it was for... I don't want to say it. What is the thing on top of your house? An antenna? No. A roof? Yes. A roof? You said... A lot of Minnesotans say roof. They do. Yeah, a lot rough. Of, and why would that? That's got to be an extension from your your parents, you know, maybe Sweden or something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. My, my family didn't own a roughing company. Rough. Yeah, we rough. owned a roofing uh, company. Roofing. <laughs> I sound Where's like a dog if company? I try too hard. Roof. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Roof. Hey, then nobody ever said, I've never heard anybody say roofing company. Yeah. Rough. That's true. Yeah. My roof. roof. I say roof. Rough. Rough. Yeah. roof. It is roof. Okay, roof. But so many people say roof. Rough, yeah, it's rough. Rough, yeah. rough. No. a roofing. I think I say rough. But that's got to be that's got to be a holdover from another language, don't you think? It, some something like that. Yeah, yeah. I would think that's probably true. But yeah, matter of fact, my son still will not. He always says bagel. 
I don't care how you pronounce it, Dad. It's bagel. It's like, okay. Bagel. Hmm. That's weird that I would say it because I know that it's bagel. That happens, though, if you've heard it your whole... Well, I, there are a lot of bagels for sale up there where you grew up. Nah, man. I no. wouldn't think so. Bagel. No. I wouldn't think so. Now, the Jewish community is nailed <laughs> up in northern Minnesota. I can see that to be mm-hmm. true. In any case, I suppose I better do some... some but, I, yeah, see, I think the number one thing... You know what? I'm going to take two seconds to explain them. So I met all these people over the weekend, and and we got we do have to have a tutorial up on the on the Tom Bernard podcast site or whatever the hell it's called, um, uh, to show people how to do that because everybody knows how to get on the internet. Not everybody. It's like, what are you talking about? An app? I don't know what the hell you're even talking about. They, you have an app for your show. Why would you have an app for your show? I mean, they ask me stuff like that. Most of the people that have that have come, come up to me over the weekend, um, were women again, and I don't. I think, so I started asking why so many women are interested in finding the show and listening to the show. And you know what the number one response is there, woman? I'm listening. No, I'm asking you a question. Yeah, I'm glad you could call me by my Christian name, woman. What, say, woman. <laughs> Remember that guy? Like, Listen here, woman. You know, oh, okay. You know, don't you think I should say that to Catherine? That'd go over big, wouldn't it? Well, it would go super well. It's going as well as it is going over with me. <laughs> Listen here, woman. Kate. <laughs> Tell me, man. I can't forget. I, I can't remember what the hell I was going to say. <laughs> but other than that, Good. Because obviously, was, you were saying why women listen. See, and I was listening. Oh, why would they want to listen to the show? Because uh, we talk a lot about our lives. Rudy talks about his. You talk about yours. I talk about mine. We talk about family a lot. Yeah. We, you know, I, you know, you don't hear. I, I'm maybe there are more that I don't know about it, but you don't hear a lot of people talking about their families and their children or their brothers and sisters or whatever. So these people, uh, almost everyone of my talk to just love that stuff. They, yeah. they, because everywhere else, well, like I said, I'm sitting here this morning. I look at the headlines. Here are the headlines from every TV station and newspaper in the country. Everyone's dead. There, you happy? Rest in peace. The hatred that's coming across our news delivery services now. And I don't mean local news. Uh, it's just hideous. Once again, it's about people getting killed. Texas is on fire with the murder. I know. And I saw a stat this morning on the hundred, what are we at? Like 146 days into the year, something like that. Something like that, probably. Yeah. Uh, getting close anyway, mm-hmm. maybe 136, wh- whatever the number was. 206 uh, attacks and murders so far. Mm-hmm. It's, oh. it's more than one a day, for Christ's sake. <sighs> And it's just, and what your perception? Why are people do, getting so violent right now? Because they're just every time they watch the news, everybody's pissed off. I mean, why is? I don't think there's a simple answer to it. Well, why not? Well, because like it's just a complex situation, and we're in such a different. Po- I don't know. I don't know how to. It seems so systemic. This this anger and this yeah. violence. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Calm down, everybody. Dial her back. Everything will be good. But, I mean, don't you look to your friends and your family and all that stuff so you don't get in that mindset? Yeah. I mean, my life is pretty boring in, like, the best ways. Like yeah, there it, you go. But, yeah, I don't – I'm not currently, like, struggling with some stuff or – I don't know. I, I can't even I, – I keep going, can I compare my life to everyone else? I don't know. Do you think when people tune in the TV, and it doesn't matter which news channel they're watching, whatever, I'm talking about national news, they they kind of get in their head. Sorry. Hello, I, how are you doing? Sorry, I hit a button from, I have a little touch screen for sound on my computer. You're a disaster. Sorry. Okay, okay. I'm just going to go home now. The show's ruined. Can you finish your thought? You said, when you think when people are watching news and when they're watching this stuff... I think they get this idea in their head, oh, if they're going to spew their hatred on the news, then I should do the same thing. I guess that's how the world is now, that these people, every time I tune into the news, I hear about this hatred, and I hate this guy, and I hate that guy, and blah, blah, blah. Maybe I should get my hatred known to everybody, too. Yeah, I think... Are they inspired? I think that's part of it. I think right now is there is a... you know, we were talking about it too. Is like there's a... Outwardly, you have to be outwardly with your feelings... You have to be, I don't know. There's just so many things tied up in it. I don't know how yeah. many, if, if, it'd be interesting for some of these, for these shootings and these people that are, you know, lashing out in such extreme ways to see what they are watching, what they're consuming. Absolutely. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, you go and start killing 15 people at a time. Oh, It's God. getting worse, man. Yeah. 
I suppose we better get into some uh, other stuff here. But I, I just, like I said, I'm hanging around with my friends, my family. Everybody's happy. Nobody's pissed off, blah, blah, blah. And then you watch the news, you would think that everybody is just wanting to kill everyone. Yeah. It's not good. That's all I'm saying. Right? Not great. All right, pals. We'll take a break here. Be right back. Now, yeah, see, now here's the problem. We talk about a-holes, and then i got to talk to Bob Sansevier. No? No, I mean. Nothing? I don't know why we're standing up for him. <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. Rudy and him fight every day, but for some reason, both of us got silent. I was wondering. I, maybe you thought that was real. No, I kind of okay, thought Sandy. Rudy was going to take the whole, like the reins on that one just because like him and Bob have this bicker, bickering relationship. Oh, but do you? Well, in like, the best way. It's on air, yeah. so it's not real. Yeah. Well, like, I don't really hear bickering. Disagreement, baby. Well, okay. He, Bob literally goes, push the right button, Rudy. Like, Oh, see, I don't even hear that kind of thing. Does he do? Does he say that stuff? On air, it's super I, funny. I, yeah. I literally don't hear it. That's weird. Yeah, no, he's cool about that. Uh, I think Brittany is just actually the button pusher around here. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, just like, people <laughs> off. Dividing us. Yep. What are you doing? Yep. <laughs> Typical. Typical. Yeah. yeah, you're sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm going right. to go get coffee. We got to go take a... Oh, well, don't, don't, don't let me hold you up here by doing the show. You I know. appreciate you saying that. Not a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, my friend Mike Lindell has a passion to help everyone get the best sleep of their life. He didn't stop by simply creating the best pillow. Mike created the Giza Dream Bed Sheets. They look and feel great, which means an even better night's sleep for me, which is crucial for my busy schedule. I said busy schedule. Mike found the world's best cotton called Giza. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. Mike's Giza sheets come with a 60-day money-back guarantee and a 10-year warranty. Giza Dream sheets come in a variety of sizes and colors. Mike's latest incredible deal is the sale of the year. For a limited time, you'll receive 50% off the Giza Dream sheets. You'll receive a set for as low as $29.98. Go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio podcast square, and use promo code TOM. There you'll find not only this amazing offer, but also... Deep discounts on my, all my pillow products, including, of course, the My Pillow 2.0 mattress topper, My Pillow towel sets, and so much more. Call 800 516 5146. Use the promo code TOM, T O M, or go to mypillow.com. Make sure you use the promo code TOM. Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. If you've been hurt in a car collision, it's traumatic enough. You don't need to waste time and energy on the legal stuff. Think of us as a partner who will guide you through the process. First off, you need to recover, but part of that is getting the compensation you deserve. At Bradshaw and Bryant, we'll work hard so you can get the rest you need during the trying months after a personal injury. At Bradshaw and Bryant, we understand how important it is to make our clients comfortable. So we build each client relationship on the pillars of honesty and transparency. Don't miss out on what's rightfully yours. We'll go to bat for you. For your free case consultation, please visit minnesotapersonalinjury.com. That's minnesotapersonalinjury.com. I'm Mike Bryan. I hope you're never injured in a collision. But if you are, don't sign anything until you've talked to Bradshaw and Bryant. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. With Mike Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. There's plenty of thoughts that come into your head when you think the name Killebrew. Of course, there's the Minnesota baseball legend, Harmon, who was responsible for many a favorite memory at the old Met Stadium in Bloomington, and many a baseball that ended up in the stands and in the gloves of adoring fans from his home runs. There's Killebrew Drive, the legendary road that connects Highway 77 to the Mall of America, and a day of shopping you'll never forget. My current thoughts for the name Killebrew is fun floats in our kitchen with my kids and grandkids, a cool, refreshing break in between innings at Target or CHS Field. Or maybe a perfect sunset paired with a sweet, frothy beverage after fishing or on your favorite walleye lake. Killebrew Root Beer and Cream Soda. Grab a six-pack at a grocery or convenience store near you. I'm Tom Bernard. This spring and summer, enjoy the one Killebrew Root Beer and Cream Soda. Gluten and caffeine-free with a generous portion of delicious thrown in. Killebrew, where memories are created and legends are made. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, most definitely. Oh, you know, I need you guys' help. Who does our social media for us? Um, like five different people. Oh, five different people do? Well, I have to, I, I write on the... Would you I, just say F you? Did you just say that? I want to. Hi, Tom, F you. Is that what you just I, said? I would, can I? Of course, you've okay. been doing it your whole okay, life. Okay, then F you, you monster. Um, Ooh, monster. I do, Rudy does, Melissa does, Quinn does, everybody does. I think Pat sometimes responds yeah. to people. Really? 
don't know. Okay, I don't go on social Not media. Ebert, so no. I do need some help because I'm getting a lot of messages from people. Um, most of them, what's the what's the, do you have your own account? Let me see what account you have. I don't have any accounts. Okay, then where well, maybe are you? I have, maybe I have an account, but I don't ever go on them. Maybe that, there's a Facebook one. Well, it might be a Twitter one. If anybody one, actually sure. wants to get a hold of you, um, the best way is go on the app, the Tom Bernard podcast app. That's what I tell them, yeah. And the top left little corner, there's a talk bubble, and you can do feedback for the show, and that emails me directly, especially during the show. I read them during the break if I'm not, you know, texting or... You yeah, it's not only messages, though. They're, they're, li they're literally trying to find if I'm ever going to get back into radio. Okay, well, they that's... They have no idea. Yeah. So a guy named Chris Pagel was one of them. Show um, me where they're... Well, well during... Why don't... These after were the show, we'll go Messenger, over Messenger, I think it's called. Okay, yeah. What's we'll Messenger? What is that? I think you might have an old Facebook account that I, nobody has access to. Well, maybe. Because well, the one we go through is the Tom Bernard uh, show. Oh, yeah. So that wouldn't be the same. No, it wouldn't. So, yeah, I, I just get a lot of that. Matter of fact, there's three in a row this morning. Quit bragging. Chris, so jo popular. They're tr yeah, well, you know, it's, it's a group <laughs> effort, sister. What do you think of that action? So, okay, we get it. You get messages and... No, I'm just saying I'd like to be able to get a hold of the people somehow and teach them how to listen to the show because they don't, they don't know, I guess. Yeah, well. I think most people would know. I just heard Bob giggle. <laughs> tell, tell, I want to say shut up, you. Yeah, shut up, Bob. Okay. Wait until you're introduced. We got a whole I'm, liner for please. you. I, I am laughing. Tom, you just respond to them if you want to get back to them. It's a mess. <laughs> I don't go on social media, you dumb bastard. Are you yeah, deaf? you dumb bastard. We hate you, Bob. I'm not going on social media. It ain't going to happen. I'm sorry, Bob. I had to take the heat off me. <laughs> you know why I don't go on social media? For this very reason. Because yeah, people get to be a smart ass, and I get really pissed off, and then it ruins my day. Yeah, you dumb bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I'm the only one out here thinking that. Just reply to them. Or get I'm not going to reply. Gonna reply. To you got it? I don't have... I might have accounts, but I don't know how to get on them. I have no idea. Let her do it. Because you have to sign in, don't you, every time you go on? Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know, know what my sign-in stuff is. I don't know. I've been on social media in 11 years. Well, if you're getting I messages, haven't. you're already signed in. Bob, quit no, stating the obvious. No, it's not. You punk. <laughs> Could I have a conversation with anybody without both of you Sorry. talking over me? <laughs> typical, typical. You, you are know. signed in if you're getting messages. Bob's right. Why do I, does it tell me to sign in to reply then? I don't know. Okay, no, 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 you're experts at it. You yammer. I told you. Storm. Okay, my solution was Listen to me. I would look at it after the show. I can't tell you anything with just like verbalizing what's going on. But how could you tell me I'm signed in when it tells me to sign in? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Because you don't know what the hell you're talking about. You're right. I don't you're know what disaster. I'm talking about. I have not succeeded. I'm trying in to help media. people listen to the show, and you and Bob just piss all over it. Typical. Typical. That's all I have to say is typical. All right, Sandy, your time's up. Sorry, we'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> well, I was, uh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> anyway, yes, yeah, so but but anyway, I, I will try to figure something out. Or I don't know what the hell it is, but let me just close with this. If somebody else is paying attention to social media, is anybody, I assume somebody's paying attention to what used to be my social media, so if people do ask that, they can respond to them. Is that correct? Is anybody on the show with me? I thought you Either were Either all talk at the same time or nobody talks. No. You guys really rhetorical. suck at this. I want you to know that. Uh, You're horrible and terrible people. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> what? The conclusion. The conclusion, conclusion is you guys should jump off the nearest cliff. You should just go end it all right now. We're only on the third floor, so go higher before you jump out the window. All right. We got to get to Sandy because Sandy's been waiting patiently. So Has he, though? It's going to be one of those days. Has I'm he missing. been waiting patiently, though? Uh, thank God, why me? <laughs> I could still be working over at Dayton. No, I guess I couldn't. They're not no, you couldn't. Yeah, <laughs> they are closed. It's been a few years, but, yeah. you know. Uh, Sandy. Yes, sir. Brought to you by Bradshaw and Bryant. Bob Sansphere Sports brought to you by Michael Bryant. Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury lawyer seeking justice for the injured. Contact Bradshaw and Bryant at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. That's minnesotapersonalinjury.com. So what's up, Sandy? Well, first, I have to owe a massive apology to Rudy because I learned this morning he's not the one hitting the buttons nope. and causing issues. Well, who Thank is? Thank you for that. 
Well, Brittany. it's not you and it's not him. Yep. So. Oh, no. tip. Yeah, see? Yeah, me with touchdown. my master controls over you here. If you're watching the video, this is the touchdown signal. Touchdown. You know what? What's this symbol? I don't oh. know. <laughs> if you're watching the video on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> She's waving to you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, hey, I got it, Tom. This is really, it's very interesting because I did hear where you were talking about I got to weigh in on this thing about violence because I, I yes. thought about it this yes. morning because I saw the stories about the shootings and the, the, another police officer being killed. I do. Th I know that people are all whipped up uh, about guns. Yeah. And I think, though, it's the permissiveness of violence that you get. You don't get arrested for carjacking in, in Minneapolis That's anymore. Right. Yep. They You're pick right. you up. They'll let you right out the door. If you drive. Let's say from Bloomington, you're a high-speed chase. You go into Minneapolis. The cops are told you cannot chase them in Minneapolis because it might be too fast. I mean, you could get away with anything in Minneapolis, and yes. you have this yep. dimwit mayor telling you it's safe and come on down. I, but I think that's the problem, that the laws have are not being enforced, and you can get off. They know you're not going to get in trouble for whatever you do. Yeah. And that, to me, is why it's getting much worse. And it's the, also the media particularly Fox and CNN, those two drive the hatred and the anger all they can for more ratings. And by the way, both their ratings are failing miserably, both their sets of ratings. Neither one of those stations is anywhere near as big as it used to be, so I think no. we're all getting sick of their puking hatred out. Now, I am not going to say this with uh, you know definitively, but I saw something on social media that someone claimed that the Star Tribune has not been covering or – or mentioning what happened in Dinky Town Friday night. I don't know is anything about it. I don't know because I don't even know anything that happened. No. So well, really, was, you don't well, know it either. Mm -mm. I have no clue what he's talking about. There was violence in Dinky Town. I mean, it was oh, like geez. mobs of uh, of kids from <laughs> suburbs. They said, but I don't know. I mean, I didn't look at the Star Tribune. Frankly, I don't. I don't go online and I take a look at the headlines right. if something catches my eye, but I didn't even look to see if there's a story about it. Well, Bob, but there were issues in Dinky Town. I check it every morning. I check that and a couple of national news sites, and I didn't see one thing about that. No, I didn't look at the whole thing, but it's certainly not one of the top stories, not even close. Well, the way, based on the information, and it's, it is on, I mean, the local stations were covering it. Uh, it should be a decent amount, you know, a good sized story. But and again, I'm not condemning them because maybe they did cover it. So why are we having violence in Dinky Town right now? What's the story? What's that all about? Uh, well, there's some people just want to be disruptive around graduation for some reason. Oh, you really? You know, and it, it's just, it, Tom, it, there's violence everywhere because you can get away with it. Minneapolis is the lawless town. It is. You're right, Bob. And by the way, I can say this definitively to everyone, uh, and you can pass it along to any perpetrators you know. The reason you do those things is you're... Because you're an absolute candy ass. You'd never think of doing it face-to-face -face with somebody. You'll only do it if there are 10 of you uh, destroying other people's property. You're a bunch of candy asses. That's the real story here, right? Yeah, and, and, what, and did you see uh, the story about the, uh, the dad? Dad of two young kids in St. Anthony. Somebody was trying to steal his car. He went outside. And they shot him to death. Oh, I did. I did see that. Yep. I mean, that is like an, it, it appears to be an oasis. Not anymore. Over a car, you kill someone. Over a car. Yeah. Really. Uh, we really got some smart, uh, smart cookies uh, running this but, show right now, don't we? But they, again, they don't think they'll get in any trouble. And in no, many they cases, don't. they won't. It's got to stop, Bob. I'm telling you, we need better leadership. And I'm talking about across the board. And I, this is not a, a political party deal. It's not uh, Democrats. It's not Republicans. All of you assholes, get your head out of your butt and do your job. How about that? No, Instead keeping a community safe is not a political issue. Exactly, it's not. It absolutely or shouldn't be. No, you're right. And I, look, I, I'm telling you, you get some. I even get some weird feelings. I don't usually notice that kind of stuff, but some places I go, I get some weird feelings. Like there's this is something's uneasy and really weird around here. I think people are looking to cause as much trouble as they can. I mean, not people. I should say some people. No question. And again, and the cops' hands are tied. Yeah, they are. And some of them don't even want to get involved because they don't want to deal with the repercussions because you know that there's going to be protests right. if they arrest someone because everybody has a phone. And everything on a phone, it could be horrible, no question about it. I mean, we, we certainly saw that a few years ago. But there's context sometimes, and it's not always 
you know, the George Floyd thing was horrific. Thankfully, yeah. that woman did yeah. have the phone. Mm -hmm. But, you know, people who cops are afraid of being videotaped and then they wind up getting fired or arrested or charged because you got people who prosecutors who want to go after the law enforcement. And I don't they get do. it. Uh, well, meantime, like, I guess I should mention the twins lose. <laughs> Why'd you bring up the hit. twins? Now I hate you. You can bring up all the violence you want and people getting punched. Don't bring up the twins in front of me. Sam. Oh, they've yeah. only lost two in a row. They're still two and a half up, right? They lost four out of six to Chicago and ah! Cleveland. Those They're teams are lead. terrible. Yeah, the tough thing is Joe Ryan lost his first game and he yes. didn't pitch a bad game. No, he did not. What, two nothing, right? Yeah, one hit. One hit they got. Yeah, one I, hit I, wonders. I'm just telling you, Bob, you go into Chicago and you go into Cleveland, you better come out of there two out of three at least. And they didn't. One out of three. Both. You can't lose four games to terrible no. teams like that. It is, it, that is bad because these are the teams you should be beating up on. Yes. Cleveland is nothing special this year. They thought no. they'd be, but they're not. Nope. Nor is Chicago. You're right. So, But, it's, Tom, as you know, it's a long season. There's going to be the ebb. There's going to be the flow. Can I ask you guys a question? Because maybe I'll have to temper myself. Did I sound more pissed off about the Twins losing or the violence in the streets? I don't want to answer <laughs> that question. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, I think you were at a fever pitch at yeah. the time of the violence. Yes, exactly. Ready to what pop with, the, with your Twins. Exactly what it was, Bob. There's no question. Yeah. <laughs> that, we'll go with that. All right. That's everything, Sandy. Well, I mean, there's the Twins. We could certainly we could talk about the other teams, the but they're, go Leave me they're going nowhere. You know, they're done. Your Wolves and your Wild and your Vikings are trying to become Super Bowl champions. <laughs> so we'll, Sorry. <laughs> you handle it very well, Sandy, I will tell you that. Well, I covered them since 1984. I've been covering them, and, you know, I it's, know. Uh, what is it, 40, oh, not quite 50 years since they last played in the Super Bowl. So, come oh, on. God, that's painful to hear. 50 years, Sandy? Really? Not quite. No, because Chuck oh. Foreman was drafted 50 years ago, so it's like 45 years. You I know. love Chuck Foreman. What a great guy. He's, he is a great guy. I get to, I, you know, I do a show with him every Thursday, the Jim Bob Sports Jam, and he's a great guy, and he's got some great stories. What are you doing Friday? This Friday? Yeah. I have to look at my itinerary. Because Actually, I believe I'm going to, uh, with my kids, they have to go to a high school rodeo, but it depends on what time you're talking. Blow it off. No, because we, we are going to move the family podcast closer to this one so I don't have to hang around for 85 hours between the two shows. And it's a good deal of passing from one to another anyway. Uh, and we also, we're only doing Monday through Thursday with the family podcast. Now we're going to do Monday through Friday. And uh, it's been left up to me to, to, uh, to find some guests for Friday. You and Foreman should come in studio on Friday for an hour. Uh, you're gonna, so you're probably going to go around 10, 10, 15, 10, 10 15, that's exactly right. 10, 15 to 11, 15 is how, what it's going to be now. I will talk to Chuck because Chuck is, uh, I mean, Chuck is a great guy. If he's Love not traveling guy. somewhere, yeah. so I don't know anyone, by the way, that loves to drive the way Chuck does. Really? You know, he drove down to Miami to, you know, for the, for spring. He loves to drive. Yeah. Well, and I said, Chuck, it. I don't get it, but he really does like driving. Even if it's just coming from like Eden Prairie or Bloomington, he sure. loves to drive. I'll uh, ask him. I understand. Why wouldn't you? Right? So is this a two for offer or if he can't go, am I invited? Well, or, of course or, you're invited. Uh, I'm Santa, look out, Chuck Foreman, you're out, mister. I right. like specifics. No, it's, it's you know, good. Uh, I want to, you know. Yeah, it'll work out. But, yeah, if you guys can make it or if just you can make it, that would be great, Bob. We, we'd have a good I will, time. I'll, that I, I might be able to do because uh, I need to, we need to get on the road around 1 o'clock. Oh, we'd yeah, be, done be done long before then. You'll be done by 11.15. Oh well, All right. yeah, let me I, let's let's do that. And by the way, I, I was going to do the intro for Kristen Burt, but I don't see her. Is she not in today? She's here. She's up there. Oh, she's... oh, I didn't see her thing. Well, she's only the greatest ever, so if she didn't. Oh, she should God. make her own schedule anyway. Why do you people ruin my show by saying things like she might be the greatest of all time? And <laughs> what a... the Luella Hopper of Hollywood, <laughs> the head of Parsons, head of Luella Hopper. So it was Lu who was Luella again? It was. Luella Parsons and Hedda Hopper. Hedda Hopper. There you go. That's what I was. Hedda. Why would you name your daughter Hedda? What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> and why would you keep the name Hopper? Then why would you use the you name Hopper? Hedda is a nickname? Like, isn't it cut from something? I don't know. I have no idea. It's kind of cute. Hedda? I think it's kind of yeah, cute. It's adorable. Shut up. Get out of here. You <laughs> did 12 kids. Go hit the right button, will you? <laughs>
why he's still going after you. No, I think her, I, her name was Hedda, because usually I went to her Wikipedia. You see, like, where what it originally was. Yeah. And yeah, it's Wikipedia like it was originally. Because it's, no, it, she was born Elda Furry. Oh, my God. She, well, that was a smart move, not to keep Elda Furry. But how Elda do you come up with Hedda Hopper? What's that? How do you come up with Hedda Hopper yeah. after getting... Well, yeah. your name from now on is Hedda Burt, so what do you think of that action, sister? <laughs> that bad. Hedda Burt. Burt goes so well with everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. All right, Sandy, get the hell off right. the show. We'll see, see you later. <laughs> Sandy. Bob Sansfield, ladies and gentlemen, brought to you by Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury lawyer seeking justice for the injured. Contact Bradshaw and Bryant at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Uh, and now, of course, Kristen Burt. Kristen, I say I can reach out to you and tell you my wife is leaving for a week again this morning. She's I'm probably leaving right about now. I hate that. What should I do about it? Um, you should call her all the time and tell her you miss her. I do. But I should. You're right. Don't bug her too much. Let her enjoy her time away as well. Money, come home. Should I do that? <laughs> No, no, don't do the like. Where can I find the? That's what I get from my husband all the time. Oh. I, the cats yeah. need something. Where is? I'm like, you know where it is. They have a cat cabinet. It's all in there. <laughs> you know, I'll give you an example. And, and Andy and Melissa and and uh, Ethan didn't come because Ethan's still too young. He's only a year and a half. My wife, our daughter, her husband, and her two kids went and watched the Kentucky Derby over in Golden Valley. What a ball. Watching those little kids, they each got a little blow-up, little horsey thing. <laughs> they, they, I, I, honestly, God, just to be around three generations of my family like that is one of the greatest things of all time. I just had, I had such a good time. And I don't know anything about horse racing at all. You guys know anything about horse racing? No. No, I just yeah, I no. follow Gail Fan's lead. Yeah. yeah, he's. he's I know you have yeah. to wear a hat and fascinators to the if you're down in Louisville. There was a woman, the woman at the at the gatherings at Golden Valley again, Golden Valley Golf Course, and the woman who won the hat contest because they did have a hat contest at the luncheon or early dinner. I guess it was what four o'clock in the afternoon, something like that. Something like that, yeah. I think it was, yeah. She had on a hat that a manhole cover would have been proud of. <laughs> this thing was gigantic. I mean, it must have been over three feet wide. It was huge, and it went up. This feather went up about two feet too. So it was it was a hell of a lid, I'll tell you that. It was a weekend for hats and fascinators between the royal family and the Kentucky oh, yeah. Derby. If you weren't wearing a hat, what was happening? All right, you made the reference. I got to tell you, I did not watch one second of the coronation. I don't care. I know you don't care. A lot of people do care, and why? I think more. But and I'm going to tell you why. It's more for the family drama than than anything oh, else. Oh, sure, sure. That makes yeah, sense. I mean, it's been a soap opera. Also, it is a historic event, and a lot of people were like, "This is a once in a lifetime event." I do think uh, we will see William uh, be crowned king sooner versus later. I don't oh, necessarily really? think that. I don't necessarily think Charles is going to have a long reign. He's not very popular. His wife is not very popular. Really. You know, and, you have to go all the way back to the the love triangle of the century, which was Princess Diana, Camilla, and Prince Prince Charles at the time. He's King Charles now. But it's amazing to me that people are still so dedicated to Princess Diana yeah, that yeah. they were super upset. They were like, this is Diana's day. But I, I sit there and I think they probably would have been divorced anyway, and Diana probably would never have made it to Queen right. um, had the story turned out differently if she was still with us. But I, I do think it that original love triangle, which I feel like eventually carried over into like Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston, like these love triangles that people can't get over. And continue to talk about to this day. But the one thing I said, because I did have to wake up at 2 a.m. to cover it. I was working oh, in the middle of the God. night. Yeah, it was, oh, it was brutal. Um, the one thing I said is it's wild to see things you learned in medieval history play out in real life. Like to become king, he had to like touch an orb. And then they had to dress him with a, a cape. And it's really kind of bizarre to watch, honestly because they're just ceremonial heads at this point, but they yeah, really went yeah. through the whole medieval process of anointing him king. Could I say one thing? I, I did see the highlights of They would show, like on the news, they would show little video clips of it. Those people looked ridiculous. I mean, these big giant crowns. It's like, oh, my God, is this lame. 
Twitter was pretty funny because they were talking about, like, they're like, I've seen better cosplay costumes at Comic-Con. <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and people are like, well, these are historic. They're 18th century robes. Right, but honestly, right. they looked a little cheap. If you like take a step back and you know that people spend thousands on their incredible cosplay costumes. So it's just one of those situations you're like, it, it did look a little weird for $125 million in a very bad economy, which was supposedly a scaled back coronation i mean couldn't they've just done like a little private ceremony and then just done the concert the next day and been like let's have a celebration with music i don't know you know i do love you, you ever spend any time in england ireland scotland wales you ever spent any time there the three of you I have not no? No. no no one of my favorite stories this is this is how those people and it, for them to all kind of it looked like they were getting behind the coronation anyway it looked like it i don't see too many protests or anything or do you get shot if you protest? Yes, the, actually. <laughs> he goes, yes, you do. <laughs> like, yes. Um, there is a group, the Republic, which is oh, the sure. anti-monarchist group. Sure. They were there protesting with the Not My King signs. However, that week, um, they passed an anti-protest law. So the protesters, even just for peacefully protesting, were getting arrested. Really? Yes. Well, and you so, you know, that's a problem if you can't peacefully protest. I, it's one thing to, like, interrupt the procession, but if you're just standing there with a sign and you're still getting arrested, it's kind of a dicey situation when you look at something like that because you should have be able to have a say. One thing I love, now, first of all, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, that's not a huge area. When you put them all together, it's, you know, it's not a huge area, right? So many, many years ago, like 25 years ago, I was over in, uh, in England, <clears throat> and um, I got to just schmoozing with some guys at a bar, having a good time, all the rest of it. And as the drinking went on more and more and more, they thought it was really hilarious because my last name, Barnard, is a Scottish name, a Scots name, right? So basically, at that one point of drinking in the night, I became a Scott bastard. So, <laughs> oh, you Scott bastard. It's like, settle down for Christ's sake. I thought it was hilarious. Then they wanted to wrestle, by the way. Mm. That's the part. You have to understand something. You go anywhere near talking about Scotland, go to Scotland, they will want to wrestle you. I'm just telling you. I'm Scottish, so. Oh, see? Oh, yeah. look at that. No wonder we get along. Yep. <laughs> a, why don't we have I the accent? Like the my other half of the family's French, but I, and most of my family looks like the French side. I look like the Scots in my family. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? I think so. See, absolutely. The freckles, and I can't tan for the life of me. So. <laughs> oh, do you <laughs> just burn? I just burn ten me minutes too. in the sun. I'm me like too. purple. I don't yeah. ever tan. I just give. I burn like a son bitch. Yeah, it's the Good way old it Scottish is. Blood. Um, one thing I want to mention because I did a sneak preview with Landmark Theaters of the book club, the next chapter, and a few of your listeners, it was Margaret and Heather, they were like, "Please talk about it on Monday." So I'm going to do it. <laughs> um, it's coming out just so everyone knows. It comes out Thursday night. There's like a sneak preview and then it opens officially on Friday. But it's with Jane Fonda, Mary Steenburgen. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah, like great. Diane Keaton. And who am I missing? Oh, oh, Candace Bergen. And it's obviously it's a sequel. This is like fun, light, fluffy fair for your uh, Mother's Day weekend. Send mom to the movie theater. Go and like buy her snacks. Let her sit in peace for two hours. But like just a great female friendship movie. They go to Italy. So it's gorgeous. And it's like just two hours if you just want to get away from like the news. Mm -hmm. You just want to relax. Go to a nice theater, like one of those that like fold back with like, the, you know, the recliners and have a good time. It was great. Magnificent. I'm glad to hear that. I got to give you guys all a tip off, by the way. Well, not all of you because Kristen isn't in her own studio, but the, the three of us, I don't know if you guys get it. I've had people say to me, oh, let me ask you a question. Since they put you guys on camera, you know, they put you on camera and I love watching it, but why do you guys, all three of you, you just look at yourselves the whole day? I'm like, what? But I just realized looking at you is about, if you break down the little line of sight, you're about maybe a half an inch below where my picture is. So when I'm looking at you, it looks like I'm looking at myself. <laughs> Checking <laughs> that, yourself out. Like, Look at that. It's so Look. good looking. <laughs> yes, that's what. But people think we're all looking at ourselves when we're actually looking at you or whoever the next guest is. Yeah, it's the eyeline. Actually, if I looked up, my eyeline's here. 
See, but you I still look down here because I see all four of you. But see, you still when you do that again, would you please? This isn't the right eye line. See, it looks like you're looking at yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I just look at you guys because it's we yeah. do too. We want to see everyone. <laughs> I suppose. All right, young lady, get back to work. I will do my best, and I will see you all tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Thanks very much, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Kristen Burt, who's better? Not not anyone I know. I do love her. She's wonder. She's wonderful. She is legit. I really. I got to uh, check the weather. Haven't done that yet this morning. Sun at times day with an afternoon or evening isolated uh, shower, maybe even some thunder. 72 degrees for the high. Tuesday, partly sunny. and Oh, my God. Tomorrow, sunny. Partly sunny and 74. Beautiful day. Wednesday, mostly sunny. A high of 80 on Wednesday. It's the first 80 of the year, right? Nice. Mm-hmm. I think. I think it is. Uh, partial sun scattered uh, showers, thunderstorms on Thursday with a high of, yeah, it's going to be 79, 80, 74, 72. Uh, you know, and it's that time of the year where a lot of times these showers and thunderstorms kind of pass through. It's not an all-day deal. So that's good. Right now, it's partly cloud. It's beautiful right now. It's 54 degrees. 54 now, but 72 later on. Maybe an isolated shower or thunderstorm. We shall see how that goes. We'll take a break and be right back in just a couple minutes right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what I've been saying? I've been losing weight, and i got to tell you, I'm really impressed with the program offered by MNFatLoss.com. The team at MNFatLoss.com has figured out the, uh, the secret to losing up to one pound of fat every day. So far, I've lost 15 pounds, which is wonderful. I'm, I, I got to bring something up here to you guys. One, one thing I'm really impressed about with the program is, man, you guys have the same situation, I'm sure. I don't just sit around on weekends. I always have to go somewhere, do something, yeah. go out to dinner with people, do all those things. And usually when you're going out to dinner with people, you're like, well, this weight loss program is just not going to work. Yeah. I've, I've worked it out with MN Fat Loss where I, I go out literally every weekend with a client or a friend or somebody's in town or whatever. And uh, I probably could lose weight faster if I didn't, but I don't want to lose weight faster. I want to drop it a pound or two at a time, and we're good to go, right? Well, yeah, it fits into your life. You don't have to change your lifestyle. That's my exact point. Very good, Britt, Britt. Thank you. And that, that's it. You do not have to change your lifestyle. You got to, you know, you got to keep an eye on it and do a good job with it. But I just wanted to tip of the cap to the people at MN Fat Loss because... I go to dinner every weekend, and I'm all, I, at first, the first couple of two, three weeks, I was like, oh, God, I hope I didn't gain a bunch of weight. But you don't. You can work it out. It's a great program. So, yeah, I've lost 15 pounds so far. I've only been on the program for a few weeks. I'm feeling healthier. I've got a lot more energy. The program is safe and effective. You know me. I'm not going to count points or eat prepackaged meals, and certainly I'm not going to do hypnosis other than with Brittany. I would let her hip, hypnotize me. <laughs> Catman. <laughs> Seriously, folks, if you want to lose 20 to 30 pounds in a month or two, you can easily do that. You really ought to check out the program at mnfatloss.com. Of course, results may vary, but I'm losing weight. I feel great. If you want to find out the secret to losing 15 pounds in just a couple of weeks, a few weeks, uh, about a pound of fat every day, no exercise required, schedule a free consultation by calling 763-312-7600 online at mnfatloss.com. Be sure to tell them Tom Bernard said to give mnfatloss.com a call. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President at North American Banking Company. And I'm Mike Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a community bank based right here in the Twin Cities, we believe in taking the time to get to know our customers and their businesses. And part of that is hiring and cultivating a team of experienced lenders. When your business banks with us, you're not training in a new inexperienced banker. In fact, our bankers have worked with many of the same customers for years, earning their trust. We get to know you and your business, and you get to know and rely upon us. When your business is looking to capitalize on an opportunity or solve a problem, we'll be here to help you. Tom here. I know Brad and Mike, and I trust that with my banking, they've personally delivered on everything they've just said. So why not bank with my banker, North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. And now it's time for another awkward moment, courtesy of the Tom Bernard Show, Jay Moore and Kent Herbeck. Yes, I do. Legend, period. (laughs) Yeah, you know. And both of our women's name is Jeannie. Uh, 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 Not anymore. But anyway, (laughs) Ixnay AJ. (laughs) You know what, Kent? If you had 2,000 hits, maybe it would have worked out. (laughs) That was another awkward moment, courtesy.
courtesy of the Tom Bernard Show. Yeah. Oh, that was so oh. funny. <laughs> and Herbeck's like... Brr, 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 no, he goes... <laughs> <laughs> he, gave it the, he gave it the buzzer. Oh, that was so funny. Uh, how was opening up for Jay this weekend, Rudy? The best. He's the best. He's a very nice guy. So funny, so gracious with his time. Uh, Saturday night, my family came out to the Late Show, and I oh, said, hey, man, like my, my brother-in-law is a big sports guy. Jay uh, had his own uh, uh, sports talk show for a long time. I'm like, hey, do you mind if my brother-in-law comes back and just meets you? He just wants to come back and say hi. And Jay's in the middle of watching the Lakers uh, and uh, uh -oh. Warriors game, and he's like, eh, yeah, yeah, I guess it's fine. It's cool. I was like, all right. So I bring my brother-in-law back, and they meet real quick. And I, I, you, you can tell, like, Jay doesn't really. I mean, he's cool, but he does. He's watching the game. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And, and I go, uh, I go. Okay, well, we'll just take off. Thanks for meeting us. And my brother-in-law reaches into his pocket and he pulls out packs of unopened baseball and football cards. Like, oh no, like tops ninety-one. He oh. goes, he goes. I brought you a gift. Jay looks up. He goes. You can stay. <laughs> <laughs> I watched my brother-in-law, Jay Moore, open packs of football and baseball cards Aww. for 20 minutes. It was the best night of my life. It That's was so much fun. So, well, we had somebody write in say that they're um, – Trevor said that uh, his – Rudy, my sister, saw you open for Jay this weekend, and she said that your set was pretty damn funny. So Nice. Good job. She didn't what, say, do you mean, what do you mean by pretty damn pretty funny? Pretty damn, yeah. The hell? Thanks. She said you could step no. it up. Don't you want some room for improvement? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, we call them areas of opportunity in my household. Yes, right? <laughs> you have or, some areas of opportunity. Or left-handed compliments. Yeah. They call them that, too. We're going to have a courageous conversation so that you can <laughs> have. Courageous. Uh, yeah. I love that. And here, we, we're going to get notes, so mm -hmm. don't worry. We're going to have, you know, divide it up into categories. Yeah. No, that was a lot of fun last Friday, having him uh, in studio. Everybody that came in, Dan, his buddy. Cowboy a, Dan. Oh, Cowboy Dan, I can guarantee you one thing. Just looking at him in the eyes, like, he's been through a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We sat in the green room for a while, and he was telling us oh, some stories. You? Yeah, because even here Ooh. he made a quick mention. Uh, he said... Uh, uh, when Jay was like, how is it that you don't know such and such? And he's like, well, Jay, I've gone through two windshields. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. So he's definitely got some stories. So, And he brings, like, everywhere Jay goes, Dan was telling me that everywhere he goes, Dan comes with him just to keep Jay on the straight and narrow. Well, that's a good idea. Absolutely, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. because Jay's paying a lot of attention to that now, isn't he? Staying away from intoxicants and things like that. Yep. Like, even after the shows, it was like he didn't want to be rude, but at the same time, he's like, sobriety is really important to me. Yeah. So he yeah. didn't really hang out with people only because he knows the temptation that people give him. Well, right? yeah. I'm sure it's super triggering in a lot of ways, too, because, like, that's a great place that, you know, he used to hang out after. I'm yeah. sure, right? Mm -hmm. so let me ask you guys a question. Hmm. Because uh, when I did stop drinking. Yeah. Um, now, first of all, I didn't drink from the time I was 21 till I was about 30. So that whole time I didn't, I was not a big drinker during that time, but I didn't, when I did finally stop drinking, I didn't give a rat's ass about any of that stuff. Is that weird? Or did I just not get deep enough into it where it was kind of pulling at me from the inside to wheel some more? That's yeah. That's a great question. You were always, you, yeah, it feels like. Because as an alcoholic, I find that it's weird when you say, like, I just quit and I didn't care. And it's like, right. okay. Um, but also I feel like you were dealing with the problem of your alcoholism. And I think sometimes that can be bigger in general. I just want to repeat one of the, my favorite things from one of the – what are those meetings called when you go to the meetings, the AA meetings? Are you just called AA meetings? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's the one guy. I will never forget it. We're going around the table, going around, around the, the, the circled group. Mm -hmm. And we get to this guy, and he said, you people need to understand something. I love being a drunk. Yeah. <laughs> is that pretty common, actually? Yeah. Oh, I is it really? Yeah. Like, oh, I've heard people that. say that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because, like, yeah. I, I think it's, I think that's a universal truth with a lot of people. Uh, I suppose. You just hit a point where it's unmanageable, but. Yeah. So, you know, we sit, we sit around in my neighborhood. The, the neighbors in my neighborhood, we get together generally on Friday night, Saturday night. We did last night because it was so damn nice out. Mm -hmm. And they drink. Matter of fact, I supply the wine because I bought all that wine when I did used to drink. Mm -hmm. So I bring out a couple of bottles of wine and they drink. I couldn't care less about that. I'm not, it's not like, oh, I can't watch you drink. I, that's, you're drinking. I'm not. What the hell do I care? And I'm at that point a thousand percent now. Yeah. I couldn't. Nobody even 
I don't keep count of what people are drinking or who's drinking or what. Right. I don't care. But I've also been sober for 13 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and you've been sober for a long time, too. Years, and so yeah. now it's to a point of, like, I personally love when people drink because it means, like, they're more comfortable. Like, well, unless it hits that weird point where they start getting wonky and I don't want to be yeah. around that. I don't yeah. like, you don't like unpredictable people. Like, you don't like that at all. And I, I do not. You're right. No, and I don't either. I start getting, like, if that person who's normally kind of, like, a nice, safe space all of a sudden starts becoming, like, weird or, like, erratic, I'm like, I, I would like to leave. Um, mm-hmm. But otherwise, I don't care if people drink. Like, I, no, I don't either. I love I it. I love less. that, you know, they want to dance and they want to do stuff and... Yeah. There's kind of a part of me that wishes I was a bad drunk because it would force me to quit. But I'm just a guy. I like to, I get fun and bubbly. And yeah. That's fine. Then. And then I pass out watching TV. And, and that's, that's about fine. the extent of my alcoholism. I can totally see that in you. Mm-hmm. Like, if Rudy all of a sudden started drinking and was, like, grabbing booties and, like, doing weird stuff, I would hate that. Yeah. Like, then you would have to eventually be like, we're cutting this career of drinking short. Mm-hmm. But, like, I don't see that in you. No, I could see that. Um there's another one very quickly, and I'm trying to figure out how I can tell you this story because it gets too nasty even for a podcast. <laughs> we're in this group, and there's this very pretty young woman. Mm-hmm. She, I mean, very well-dressed, very pretty, all the rest of it. And then it was revealed one day after we had been together for a, a couple of months or whatever that she was going to read a letter that she wrote to her boyfriend who dumped her. Because she quit drinking, so the boyfriend dumped her, right? Mm-hmm. So he said, uh, I don't remember. I'm going to say her name was Missy. I don't remember what the hell her name was. Okay, it doesn't perfect. matter what her name was. <clears throat> but yeah, very, very well put together with the clothes and the hairstyle. And just very, very pretty young woman. So she's reading this letter to her boyfriend who dumped her. Because, you know, she, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. She's reading the letter. And as she goes along, she starts crying. And then the letter gets, let me say, more hard-hitting as you go on. And she says, I can't even look at you when I say what I'm about to say, by the way. Is it graphic? Is that why? Well, it's not going to be as graphic as it really was. I guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to clean it up a lot. But she's crying and reading the letter. And I'll say the guy's name was Bill. She goes, Bill, you just need to understand. And she's really sobbing now. You need to understand something. It was a very special relationship to me, much more special than to you, I guess. And I just, I mean, you just understand. You need to understand how much I miss smoking the pole. Ah! Only she didn't say it that way. Ah. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Holy Anna. And uh, where's Missy today? Is she is. Uh, <laughs> I got the number. Yeah, okay, good. I got the number. I'll pass it along <laughs> to you. Both. Fantastic. But I, while wow. she was reading, this older woman took my hand because she was crying along with the woman reading the letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's holding my hand, and as soon as she dropped the big C... Yeah, she... she, Nope. She didn't use... uh, She called it the big C, like a rooster. Mm -hmm. When she said that, this woman squeezed my hand so hard it hurt. Oh, my God. I thought she would immediately let it go. Like, okay, whoa. She was like, ugh. (laughs) Yeah, like, there's something about... It lacks Shakespearean when you start mm-hmm. saying it. I loved riding that pole. You go, okay, okay, well, we're getting away from uh, the romance part. <laughs> well, Just a little. It was important to her is all I'm saying. It was, it was very, very important, important to her. I, we, I, I was in a group with the AA group with a guy who looked like Elvis. I mean, the clothes and the hairstyle oh, yeah. and everything, baby. He had the whole deal. It was pretty amazing. It's funny, though, because it's something about, like, so I got sober when I was in my 20s, and it was, a, like, it felt really hard. And I now get all these, you know, when people quit drinking, they'll reach out to me because they know I've been sober for a while. Sure. And they're yeah. not, like, these big talks. I'm not somebody who's like, well, here's what you got to do. It's usually I just listen, and I just say, you know, I this is what I did. Here's what you can do, or here's some, some options. But it's funny. I feel like as we get older – it seems to rear its head because there's less chaos all around. You know what I mean? Like people that was, you know, it was okay that they were a little wild. Now they've hit their forties and they're still that little wild. It's like, okay, that's when it starts rearing its head and it's a problem. So I feel like everything catches up to you and I don't know. It's just a, it's just like a, it's a weird thought where you realize more and more that everybody's dealing with something. 
Yeah, no, there's no question about mm-hmm. that. Yeah, no question about that. It's, it's. Um, I mean, look, I, I, I can reveal some because you don't know where I went, you don't know who the guy was or whatever. Yeah. But, in, but when I finally did move on from, because I never was inpatient or stuff, I would just attend meetings, stuff yeah. like that. Just kind of gave it up. And at the very end, the counselor, um, he said, Tom, you do have to understand something, that you're not an alcoholic. I said, what do you mean? He goes, you're not, there's no way you could do what you're, you do if you were truly an alcoholic. Now, I'm not saying you should drink. Yeah. And the reason is because when you drink, all that stuff you buried inside your heart yeah. comes flooding out. <laughs> See, I don't love that that person said that. Why like, not? If it's true. Because, but is it? Like, I don't... Well, I haven't had a drink now in 20 years but, or 11 years, I mean. Yeah. But I don't like, care either. I, I don't like... Cause was, because at the end of the day, alcoholism... Our being drinking alcohol was unmanageable to you, and so like I think no, there's some power. No, it was power. pretty manageable. <laughs> <laughs> was it though? Was it's it? Not though? for everybody else. But I it was think for there's me. some power in giving yourself that title because you get to give yourself that title. If I want to quit calling myself an alcoholic, I can. It's not like there's mm-hmm. a diagnosed moment. Right. So I think there's something powerful in saying it. And, and once you kind of, like, can feel that, it's not as debilitating. I don't know. Like, I never thought it was, though. I'm, yeah. Like I said, I still serve alcohol to everybody comes into my house. I don't care. What yeah. What do I care? But also, I think there's something to that that has a, there's a control part of that as well. Like a, like a, like a part of you that, like, taps into that as well. And you're, like, a giving person. And so there's a part of you that. Oh, I do like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. like. That being like a a good gift for you is also something where you put like a feeling on that alcohol, and I don't mean it in a bad way. Like, no, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, like, see, this is that once again. I got to be honest with you. People love this kind of stuff. We talk very openly and honestly about things like this on the show. They love. They don't hear this anywhere else, right? Yeah, and it, it's funny too because it's like to me, it's such. I don't care. It's not a title. I care. No. I don't. I don't ever lead with it. No, because that would be really weird if I was like. Here's what I do and don't drink. Here's what I do and don't eat. Here's how I have sex. You know what I mean? It's like such a minute detail of my life. So I don't lead with like, hi, I'm Brittany. I'm an alcoholic. But like, booze it's hound. Booze <laughs> hound. Um, but I don't think it's a negative at this point. No. When I was younger, I did. I was very scared for people to, like, not scared, but I didn't want that to be the first thing they learned. Now I don't really care. That's fine. But it's interesting. No question about it, and I never, I mean, I never got any, like, DUIs or any of that stuff, so that maybe had something to do with, I got to believe after your third DUI, it might be time to stop drinking. What yeah. do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would think it's so. Outside. Yeah, yeah, I had an ex-girlfriend get two in a month. So, oh, yeah. 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 So that was, was it on a, the way to your house? Uh, the first one was. <laughs> the second one. You're I, still waiting for her to show up. Yeah, yeah the second good. one, I think, was on her own, but, uh, yeah, that first one, she was on her way. We were going to go meet at a bar. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and then I had to get a friend of mine to come down to go bail her out because I was already at that bar. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, you oh, can't yeah. show up with booze on your breath to get no. her out. <laughs> no. And then when I bailed her out, uh, we, it was downtown La Crosse, Wisconsin, when I, we, you know, my buddy Adam and I went and bailed her out. And then she started walking through the parking lot, and I said, where are you going? She goes, I'm going back to the bar. I was like, well, Why? She's like, well, because I can't get another DUI. Um, they have my car. <laughs> I was like, well, well you maybe go. you should just call this one a night. Like, maybe we should just go back home. She refused. She went back to the bar. How sure. long did you date her after that? It was uh, after she got the second one is when we broke up. For so good. you still, after yeah. seeing that action, oh, yeah. Rudy was still like, I can hold on to this one for a while. Like, I got to pick yeah. your next, like, Wife, I'm gonna pick your next oh, wife. Next wife. You oh next my god, wife. You, you're giving me so much more credit. Oh, there's no way is, I'm getting is married. Is having a wife? Yeah, is that even a goal? Yeah, like, not at it, all. For ever. any of us, no. like, if, no. If the that is one of my favorite thing to ask people is after they've procreated, or if you choose to or not, or if you don't want to procreate, is there is there a reason for a second marriage? No. Like, if something happened to me and Justin, would I ever get married again? Absolutely not. No. But, uh, yeah, that's like um, relationships and golf. It's like I thrive in toxic relationships. That's why I stick with the things I'm really bad at. So Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. A lot of us do that. Yeah. That is true. You love crazy because, like, the idea that this person was still going to go out and you still dated them for at least a month for her next DUI oh, yeah. makes me go, you love crazy. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, those days are gone now. Yeah, but, yeah, 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 yeah. You love, I should, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Past tense. That's because it's like that is a huge red flag. Mm-hmm. So I have yeah. a question for both of you, hmm. different generation than mine. 
do you think marriage is almost over? Yeah. That's, that's the feeling that I get. Yeah. Well, I mean, when they all end 50, you know, more than 50% end in divorce anyways. Is and it a, really? Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, I don't think that we are, just because of finances, I don't think we're anywhere near close to having people that are going to cohabitate. Because yeah. really, you need to have two yeah. incomes, one yeah. household. That's really yeah. how you make it nowadays. Regardless if it's somebody that you're married to or just a roommate or a relative. But even I've had those thoughts because I'm doing it all on my own. Uh, yeah. I, have, I, have, I mean, I have... Six streams of income. I would like to have it be one or two, yeah, but I have to have yeah. six streams because I'm busting my ass because I'm paying for school for my daughter and yeah. I got my own mortgage and yep. I got I got a vehicle that's got two hundred thousand miles on it. I'm, I, there's things I got to pay for. Yeah. And the only way you can really, really now, obviously, there's people out there that have a good income that don't. But if you really want to be able to make it and have a good uh, retirement and be able to put some money away, it's it's two incomes, one house. And, and, and my thought is, so I don't worry so much about that because I'd be fine with having a smaller house mm -hmm. or like, you know, picking a different neighborhood or whatever. I don't know. And this is this is my a, a feather in a cap. I mean, you for you. I think people who raise kids by themselves are the most impressive people I've ever met because me and Justin, we are so, I mean, we have to take turns. We figure things out, especially on the weekends, trying to figure out who's going where and who's watching. I don't know how people raise kids without a partner. That has to be the hardest thing in the world. Well, luckily, I have my daughter's mom. Yeah, who's, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah but, who's, who's in my life. But, yes, I totally agree with you that there are people out there, and especially for, you know, when you're a single mom with kids and, you know, three jobs. I, I don't yeah. know how you do it. You I don't know how you do it. And so that's where I go. Having that partner, like Justin can't just leave or I can't just leave. Having that marriage, I do, that, that to me is important. But I don't. I do think you're right, Tom. If you're not actively, if you don't want to raise kids or if you don't, you know, whatever, I just don't think it's necessary to well, get married. Well, even if married. you do want to raise kids, I know some people that they are having children, they're never going to get married. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I just mean having a partner. Like, oh, right. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. then I go, that's, that's really where I go. I'm glad we, you know, got married. I'm glad we did that. But, um. Yeah, I have, and I'm sorry. I didn't mean to discredit. I know you have a your your um your your kiddo's mom is is totally in in the picture and stuff. But I just mean like that's a hard row. That's yeah. that's hard. Hard to do that one by itself. Could you do your your, your list of those three? or four things at the very beginning and that because I want to do a Peter Falk thing that he actually did and mm -hmm. it was wonderful. List of three or four things in the beginning. What do you kind of like the stuff that you have to you have to go through in your life? Uh, you know. You talk about paying all the bills. Oh yeah, that. no, uh, yeah, because I got my own mortgage. I got to be able to pay for a car. I got my daughter's. I mean, the tuition at her school is outrageous. Then on top of it, she has her computers that I got to pay for. I mean, braces. Jesus Christ! Don't even get me going on the goddamn braces. Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> what movie was that in when he did that? I can't oh, remember. God, it was funny. I'm. I lost my left leg. My eye fell out. Of Paradise. I love that. We gotta start every time anyone get. If, we know them well enough that they give us a sob story. We have to go paradise. <laughs> you do. You got to do it. Because so. when he did that, I laughed for about a month. It's oh, so God, funny. I loved it. Was it uh, Wings of Desire? Was that what it was? I don't know. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> he goes, paradise. Hmm. Honest to God, this one. And then a guy comes back at him and builds up. Yes, we had four kids in my family. We lived in a shoebox. It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> But that man was brilliant. I got, I actually got a chance to meet Peter Falk in person. He came into the studio over at the Q one time. And I'm telling you, what a dream come true for me to actually sit down for a couple of hours with Peter Falk and talk and just, what a sweetheart of a man. That's awesome. And now he's not around anymore, damn it. Well, again, the common thread that all these people are dead is you. So it makes That's you true. It's a very You're good the point. only constant in They're all dead? these variables. They're dead? Is that you knew them. No, Paradise. Oh, paradise. I don't have to put up with this crap anymore. The sweet release of death, I think, is what it's called, isn't Died it? Died young, paradise. Paradise. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> We're going to use that from now on. I agreed. Oh, it I does crack that. me up. i got to write that down somewhere. Got to give the credit to Peter Falk. Uh, I just looked at a couple of things that popped up from Art Sears. And by the way, thank you, Art. Uh, uh, oh, my. By the way, a lot of people did mention uh, Jay Moore being in the studio on Friday because it, it literally is the beginning of what the morning show used to be. We having people come in every Thursday and Friday, particularly comedians, 
It was one of the people's favorite parts of the show. And Jay Moore did not disappoint. He came in. He was right on the money. He was terrific. He was very friendly, not an a-hole at all. People love that stuff, man. He was so funny. And I love how he was like, I really got to get going. And then we're like, all right, cool. Well, we're just going to bring Kent Herbeck in real quick. (laughs) I'm not going anywhere, Kent Herbeck. (laughs) Oh, my God. He was so funny about it. That That was was, nice. I would definitely, I think it's the second and third hour, the tail end of the second hour. Some people messaged in asking when. um, Jay jumped on right at the second hour of the podcast. Um, at the end, and then the third hour is a he's yeah. mostly on. Even though he had to leave, he stayed around as long as yeah. possible. Yeah, I thought we were going to have him for like 15, 20 minutes. He was <laughs> here for like an hour and a half. Oh my God, Ken Her- he dropped the E, he kept saying. <laughs> <laughs> he dropped the H R B E K. What the hell is that? No, that's, that's man, of. Obviously, you're not going to have people like Jay Moore in town, but, uh, you know, that was a good all get. the time. That was a good get by it was Rudy. A, no, it was indeed, no question. But that's the thing that people just love because, and they were surprised, by the way. They came in, uh, the three of them. I think most, doing most radio morning shows now is not all that fun. You want to know how excited they got when they saw there was a coffee maker here? <laughs> That's bleak. Paradise. They, they, Paradise. They couldn't believe it. They were like, every time we go to a radio station, they never have coffee. You guys have an actual coffee maker. Do you know how mortifying it was to work at the other station? And there was like, okay, I'd have to go, you know, because when I was an intern, I'd be like, can I grab you some, you know, coffee? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, our coffee's terrible, but okay. Are they saying, no, I'll just take a water. And for a long time, I had to use a coffee cup and fill it up in the sink and bring it to oh, them until God. I finally was like, listen, to our boss. we have." And so then he had a cooler in his office that was locked that I had to go through him to really? get a bottle of water. Yes. Hmm. Because was it Hint? Like, he doesn't want people taking it. You know, it was only for, and only for big guests would get oh, the bottle yeah. of water. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Mike Brody. You get no water. <laughs> I love Mike Brody. Isn't he a great guy? How mortifying after, here's your water. Oh, and the cup. <laughs> sorry. No, it's, it's, no ice. It's a dream cup. That was what really, really did blow up the, the morning show at the queue. It brought it to a 30. When, because nobody would let comedians come in, apparently. In the, I did not know that. But 30 years ago, 35 years ago, nobody would let comedians come in unless they were like, you know, the, some huge name. Yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Comedians are funny. They're oh, good yeah. people in general. Some are pricks. There's no but question about it. even when they're pricks, it's funny radio. I've had, we've had some monsters come in the studio. Well, and who? You're, who? We've, it was funny. I like, don't ever remember. I don't. I'm so even keeled. I didn't notice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, we got All right, Sarah, a couple of things. Uh, two very funny mom comics, Momix Mother's Day radio tour. They want to come in on Thursday at uh, May 11th. What do you think of that one? Uh, I saw that email come up. I haven't had a chance to check out who they are yet. But yeah. We well, can book them if you guys. Yeah. 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 Now, the one I got, do have to ask you guys about, because this man has, I doubt that he'll come on the show, but maybe he will. He and I have never gotten along. Bill Nye wants to come on tomorrow. You're not a fan? I can't stand him. Okay. Really? And he can't stand me. But that doesn't mean we can't have him on. Okay. I can sit back and shut up. I don't care. Okay. I find him to be an obnoxious pain in the ass, actually, to tell you the truth. Okay. I don't, it's just one of those deals. I, I know. don't know. What, what is it about Bill Nye you don't like? I, I like don't. that you're... I like that you're bringing this up. I'd answer you, but she's talking over me Sorry. again. I was so. trying to give you a compliment. My bad. Well, no, I, let me respond. I'm like, you should respond. What were you saying? I didn't even hear you. I said, I said, I love that you're admitting this and talking about this. No, I agree with you. You got to be honest. If you're not going to be honest about stuff, I don't want to listen to you, right? What Rudy asked was, "What drives you crazy about him? What's why do you why you?" I don't know. It was just one of those deals. It just didn't happen. You know, it was one, matter of fact. Now that we we're on Fridays with the family podcast, I got a, uh, an email from a friend of mine said, "Hey, you should have so and so on on Friday." He apparently didn't know that so and so and I don't get along at all. And of course, then he called me back. I said, "Yeah, no problem. That that sounds good." He uh, texted me back about a half hour later and said, oh, you know what? He can't make it this week. And I could have told him that because yeah. I don't get along with the guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There are certain types of people that I don't – I get along with pretty much everybody, do you think? Um, a lot of people anyway. I would say for how many people you have to inter- you interact with on a yearly basis, yeah, huge. Yeah, I get along with most of them. I don't know what the hell it is. Sometimes it's people – rub each other the wrong way or something. And I think it's a two-way street. It's not just one way. I think it's both ways. But we can acknowledge that you are, if you haven't earned the right to say, I don't want that person or whatever on the show, yeah. you've earned that. 
But like, I don't care if you want to have Bill Nye on. No, I don't have any problem having but him I, on. You know what I mean? Like, there's times where you've brought up people that I'm like, whatever, I don't want to, like, don't want to, I don't adore. But I don't think I'm at that point in my career. No, that, really? No, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but, like, I, I should suck it up because, like. Mm, you'll learn. You know, but I think yeah. you are, I will say, you are at a point in your career, if, if that's ever a feel, if somebody has done that, like, you can say, nah. And by the, by, by the way, again, same token, he's more than welcome to come on the show tomorrow. I'm yeah. just, I'll talk to him, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking to him. You know, yeah. you guys can handle that. I, gotta, I was hoping it was the other Bill Nye, the British actor. <laughs> we can get him next week. That guy's phenomenal. He's got a new movie out on streaming. You know the guy I'm talking about? Yeah, Bill Nye, the actor guy. Don't tell me what time. I'm, 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 I'll break when I feel like it. Sorry, I want Chris at some point to come on. Oh, God, I suppose we have to put up with I mean, we can enjoy that. Yeah. Matter of fact, we can bring him. Okay, we'll, we'll take a break. We'll yeah. be right back. And, and we'll have Chris Eggert on. And we're going to ask him two people that he hates. You love it. So get a list, Chris. <laughs> we'll be right back. This is the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, Mike Lindell and MyPillow are launching MyPillow 2.0. When Mike invented MyPillow, it had everything you could ever want in a pillow. 20 years later, he discovered a new technology that makes MyPillow even better. The MyPillow 2.0 has the patented adjustable fill of the original MyPillow, and now with the brand new fabric that is made with a temperature-regulating thread. The MyPillow 2.0 is the softest, smoothest, and coolest pillow you'll ever own. Say goodbye to tossing and turning and flipping your pillow over in the middle of the night. And more great news on the MyPillow 2.0. Buy one, get one free offer with promo code TOM. MyPillow 2.0, with its temperature-regulating technology, is 100% made in the USA and comes with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Just go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio podcast square to receive the MyPillow 2.0 buy one, get one free offer. Just when you thought MyPillow couldn't get any better, MyPillow 2.0 gives you the best pillow ever. Promo code TOM or call 800-516-5146 to get your MyPillow 2.0s now. Hey folks, Judd Zolgad here. You know, wouldn't it be nice to lose over 20 pounds before summer? Well, you can with Livia's doctor-recommended program. Look and feel your best with a weight loss program voted number one in Minnesota. Receive personalized and guided support from Livia's team of experts. Join today and receive three months free plus a free gift during Livia's Client Appreciation Week. What are you waiting for? Get summer ready with Livia. Call today, 855-GO-LIVIA or visit Livia.com. You know, I lost 40 pounds more than a year ago now, and here's the best part. Livia helps you keep the weight off. So we're not just talking weight loss here. Uh Uh-uh. We're talking weight loss and sustainable weight loss, and ultimately, that's the most important thing. Start your success today and get summer ready. Call 855-GO-LIVIA or visit Livia.com. That's L-I-V-E-A.com. Join now and receive three months free plus a free gift call now 855 go livia or visit livia.com don't miss livia's annual spring client appreciation event may 6th through the 12th special savings giveaways and more we are back ladies and gentlemen you know i gotta mention something for for new listeners um because i was just thinking of walking down the hall i haven't talked to anybody or whatever but for new listeners they yeah. probably do not understand something what that if i attack you on the air it means i like you People don't, I don't think a lot of people realize that. Like, I, I attack you all the time. Yeah, I don't care. Oh, because it, you're just like a family member. And like, you know you're I'm coming. You're a pain coming, in the ass. You know, know that, that I'm coming back every day. <clears throat> well, that's true. That's I don't a care. given. Yeah, I don't care. I've never liked Chris Eggert. That's the other part that's of it. That's true. Yeah, no. But no, I mean, if, I, if I'm always nice to you, it kind of means I don't really like you. You know, I'm trying to keep you at arm's length by being nice. Does that make sense? Yeah. Eggert's not talking to us. He's decided. Yeah, it makes sense. perfect sense. Yeah, I mean, if, if look, I'll be nice to people and all the rest of it. But if I'm I, if I'm always nice and polite to you, means I, I don't really care for you. I'm keeping yeah, it arms. Yeah, right. Way. You don't want to commit any emotion to them. Like you don't even care enough to even. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. Me and Alex talk about we can tell when you don't like somebody. Oh really? Oh yeah. Me and Alex talk about your little your. I'm not gonna tell them. Like your your. I have tells. Oh damn! Huge it. tells. <laughs> I'm going to have to say that one of them, I'm just going to vert. If, if you go watch the YouTube video, you do this. Oh, yeah. Oh, the wipe in the face. When somebody does, yeah, like, like, says mm, something. Okay. <laughs> and we always are like, oh. You know where I think I got that? Huh. I, I never even thought of this before, but I just looked up at the screen when I was doing that. Yeah. I think I got that from Ralph Cramden. Really? I think so. Because huh? it's, the, remember, he, not, yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. 
I bet it is. That's probably where it came from. That's so funny. But no, I, I like most people. I would, wouldn't you say I like it like 90% of people, don't I? Yeah. And, I think. And you, again, you're around a lot of people and yeah, a, lot a lot of, of big people. personalities. Um, you probably like more people, like, sincerely than I do. Yeah, you're, yeah, I could see that. That makes sense. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Eggert with us. So what's the latest with you, Pally? Oh, I, I, first I just will say this, and I, I mean, it was an awful weekend of news. There's just a bunch of crap. I mean, disgusting. terrible, 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 yep. terrible. So um, it's funny you're talking about Bill Nye, the science guy. Mm-hmm. I worked out in Seattle in television, and he used to be out there. Oh, right. So yeah. Yeah. all kinds of people have like Bill Nye connections. Um, I don't. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh oh. Everything that <laughs> I don't remember. I just remember that he worked. A lot of people spent some time working with him in Seattle. OK. And, and it was a very pleasant experience, it looks like. They did a show called Almost Live, which I really liked. It was oh, like, oh, yeah. uh, um, it was a Pacific Northwest version of Saturday Night Live, oh, okay. and I think he was on there for a number of years. That was actually a really funny show. It's where Joe um, McHale got to start. Oh, really? Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. right. Because mm-hmm. he was a Seattle I like guy. Joe McHale. Um, yeah, I'm a good guy. So I, I don't know. Here's what I know about people who grew up in the Pacific Northwest. They're they've got a different personality, like they really yeah. do. Yep. Uh, and, and I don't know, and that's not bad. It's just, it's, it's not very Midwestern. That's for sure. So my, my first thought is Tom, is that maybe, you know, if, if there's maybe not jiving, it just, some of that might just be a regional thing because, um, you know, he was born up there with moss on their backs. That's, <laughs> what the hell does that mean? that's what, that's what, um, <laughs> Northwestern, that's what, um, Northwesterners describe themselves as with moss born on their with, backs. If you're born with moss on your back, that hey. means you live in Seattle. You're used to the wet, the rain, oh, I moss see. grows on everything. Sure, sure. So that's how they identify themselves. Well, good for them. Um, yeah. Anyway, weird. So you didn't like Seattle, huh? I liked it. I, it was just so far <laughs> away from everything. Yeah, that's true. I love uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> he wipes his face. Chris, Get the face rub going. You've moved around so much for your job. Is there any chance, is there any opportunity that would pop up at this point in your career that you would move for now? No. No. And at this point now, it'll be like when I get, when the day comes that I'm downsized and I get shipped off to the farm and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm back out in Rapid City where I've, or Sioux Falls where I first kind of started TV and I begin my, my, uh, descent is probably how that would work, but hopefully I, I'm not in any hurry to leave here. So no, I understand that. Now I have to ask you a question because yeah. my son, Andy, he eventually has his goal set on moving to rapid city, moving to the black yeah. Hills. That's where he wants to live someday. It's a beautiful place. He and- does love it. I mean, I, I definitely get it. I, I lived there at the wrong point in my life. I lived there when I was 26 years old. Like, as a 26-year-old who has career ambition in oh, this yeah. industry, yeah. like, you can't make any money there. Like, it just wasn't, you know, right. I, I wanted to leave just because I wanted to make, you know, sort of move up. But I really like Seattle. But it's it's so – it's like – it's a different world. It's like it's not even – it's like it's its yeah. own unique place. I still consider myself a very, very lucky man to have experienced being in the Black Hills when it started snowing. I will never wow. forget how beautiful that was. My God, it was stunning. Wonderful spot. So I can see why. Brittany and Rudy, have you guys ever spent any time in the Black Hills? Mm-mm. Got close. I went to Dickinson, North Dakota for a gig. And I, I think that's kind of right on the cusp of where the Black Hills kind of start in North Dakota, right? The, the it, northern part of it? Yeah, it's... It's different than down by Rapid City, but yeah, yeah, I think it is still technically, uh, geographically, probably part of it. Yeah. God, Dickinson, North Dakota. I know somebody was born there. I don't know if you know him. You know, you know Schumacher, Craig Schumacher. Oh Oh, yeah, yeah, comedian, right? Well, he, I think he did for a while, musician, comedian. The whole. I haven't seen Craig in years now. I don't even know where the hell he moved. He moved out of town. Let's see. But Shoe Bob, yeah, he grew up in Dickinson, North Dakota. A Jew in Dickinson, he always called himself. I was the only <laughs> Jew in Dickinson, North Dakota. <laughs> okay, well. I bet that's true. Uh, it's probably true, I would imagine. It was one of those. Well, Gelfan, 
nice Jewish boy. His uh-huh. family, his mother and father, grew up in Oklahoma. Boy, when I think of Oklahoma, I think I think of Jews. There's As no the, doubt. I about think it. of Gelfan. <laughs> I think of Gelfan. Prairie man. It's all true. <laughs> so everything else good in life? Yeah, everything's everything's fine. I I pulled a couple stories for you guys today uh, that I thought may be of interest that weren't um, the most awful things in the world. Um, uh, buffets are on the way back. Buffets That's what, are making a that. comeback. Did yeah. you read that? Uh huh. What do you think? Well, it makes perfect sense because they all had, you know, when COVID happened, they all had to kind of shut down and, and right. blah, 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 blah. And uh, what is it? Old Country Buffet, CC's Pizza. Have you guys ever been to a CC's Pizza? <gasps> no. I, I have. What is it? <laughs> it's Britney's face. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, there's like. I'm just gonna say this. I don't. I can't stand when pizza has like a sweet taste. To oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Like a sugary taste. Uh, I'll say yeah, this. that's true. It does have kind of a the dough has a sweeter taste, doesn't it? I'll say this. We had a nickname for it. It was called. We used to call it feces. Feces pizza. Oh no! Magnificent. That's how, that's how but bad it was. feces. If you're looking to advertise, still come to us. Okay. <laughs> Where is? I don't it? think there's not think there's any feces no. in our area. No. Is there not? I, why do I think there's one in Egan? A CC's pizza? I don't think so. I'm on it. Yeah, I've never had one. So very I would not like it though if it's sweet. I'm uh, no good. Um, let's see. Uh, pizza Ranch is also part of that, which is quite good if that's what you're into. Like, dude, you get you get freaking roasted chicken, mashed potatoes, corn, gravy, and pizza. I mean, what really mm-hmm. more could you ask for? <laughs> Yeah. And a salad bar, which nobody ever eats at, right? Well, yes. yeah, it just sits there all day. I was deployed with a kid that worked at Pizza Ranch, and I'd never had it before. And so I don't know how many times on our, you know, 10, 13-hour convoys, he'd be like, all right, Hagen, let me lift this up some of the things and see if you'd like. Like, we would talk about Pizza Ranch so much because I'd never had it. So I always think about this kid when Pizza Ranch comes up. But that's Have good, you had though. it now? No, I still haven't had it. I've disappointed him. I've heard that it's good. I've never had it myself. You guys ever had it? No, Pizza where's the, is it? That, they, we, I know we have those in Minnesota, but where's yeah. the closest one here? Like St. Cloud? I think there's one in Shaco. Actually, oh, is there? Not too far mm-hmm. from you. All right. No, I heard um, it's good. Yeah. Anyway, their their percentages, the business is way up because uh, a couple different factors. Obviously, they had to shut down, or a lot of them had to shut down during COVID. And uh, now they're open, and because the economy is doing what the economy is doing, like that kind of a, that kind of affordability to strap on the old feed bag is more appealing to people. Sure. You know, I mean, it does. It, it makes perfect sense to me. I never even really gave it any thought until I read that article this morning, and then I was hungry for freaking pizza ranch. I can't believe you got, <laughs> dude. I, yeah. I'm not a. I am not. I am a simple man, but. Uh, I do like good food, like good quality food too. But let me tell you what, Pizza Ranch is freaking awesome because it's pretty good quality. Yeah. And if you've got a couple of like, I got kids that are teenage athletes, like if they're in the mood for that, I'm saving myself a whole lot of money by <laughs> mm-hmm. taking them to Pizza Ranch. They're good. And don't they have something sweet everyone likes there? They would always talk about like, like it was like yeah, like a dessert cinnamon pizza, type pizza thing. or something like that. That that yeah. would be. Literally yeah. what the guys would always be like, oh, yeah, that's what you want to try. So, yeah, maybe this story wasn't that interesting. It was just that I was hungry when I was. No, first it's an, over the- I think it's. An, <laughs> no, I will tell you the reason I find it interesting is I'm not a buffet kind of guy. Yeah. I mean, I'll eat at buffets, but I don't really like them. And it all came from one time. Some son of a. Bitch. Um, I was playing in a golf tournament and it was a buffet at the, you know, between day uh-huh. two and day three or whatever the hell it was. It was yeah. a buffet, yeah. right? So I'm in line at the buffet, and a guy in front of me stops at the chicken wing dish, you know, the big pan of chicken wings, yeah, and starts eating them over the pan. No. And he's biting, and pieces are falling back into the pan. No. I'm I'm done. I can't do do this anymore. I literally, I can't remember where I went to eat lunch, but I left and came back after... This guy's like basically spitting into the chicken. Like, what are you doing? Oh, that should be illegal. I agree completely. You ever seen something like that? Yeah, I don't know. I have been to Hibachi Grill on Lake Street, so I feel like that's pretty close. Hibachi, <laughs> the yeah. Hibachi Grill? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that still there? Oh, yeah. 
It's still there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's still there. Ele- <laughs> cool. 11 25 for all you can eat, and beers are a buck 25. Whoa. It's, yeah. It is so bad, it's good. Can yeah. I avoid spitting in it? I think you have to pay extra for that. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. I knew it. There's a couple different Indian restaurants that have buffets, and it's epic because it's things you would never order. You would never oh, yeah. even know to yeah. order. And because of it, you know, you can, like, find your new favorite. I would say that's one of my favorite for sure. A little, so I should get back into the buffet deal. People don't eat over the chicken wings anymore. I don't know yeah. if they do, but just shut your eyes a little bit. Blur that, your eyes a little yeah. bit when you're getting stuck. You do have to sort of go yeah. in with the expectation it's, you know, there's it's, gonna be a couple things about it. They're they're gonna be sketch. I <laughs> have, country buffet around. There I was more? just gonna ask oh, that. Really? I was gonna I say in high school we had my one of my best friend's dads. He would every like couple months would go. All right, let's go to Old Country Buffet, and you would have thought we were going to Vegas. Like it was <laughs> mm-hmm. the highlight of our week. And sure. it, we thought it was so good. I don't remember. I can't. You know, I I would love to try it again and go. Is it? But I remember thinking it was. Ooh, we um, really Michelin five star restaurant. <laughs> yeah, a friend of mine's got uh, like a little tiny, like a, like a I don't know, commemorative plaque from OCB because he ate at every single OCB in the state of Minnesota. How, How many? Shut up! That, that's, that's awesome. Were there? I think at the time there was like thirty five, yeah. something like that. I mean, there was I think there was two in Duluth. There was a bunch in the cities. Who's he's from here? And then I think like Rochester, Mankato, places like that. Uh, the last one that he went to was in Alexandria, and that was the last one on the list. Are they still around up there? No, gone. Oh, they're gone. Yeah, they're, I think yeah. in fact I think they're all gone. Do you guys? Really? Did you ever grow up with this? My I didn't, but my mom used to tell me about it when she, they she comes from ten kids. There's ten kids in her family, and they would weigh them to get the price. Yeah, yeah. Of oh yeah. Each pl- of each kid. So like. Really. Yeah. So like my mom, if she was smaller than her brothers, she, they would pay less for my mom than mm-hmm. they would pay for her. Bro- like. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the name of those places, but um, that yeah. blows my mind. I would rather just pay what like. Can I just pay you the umbrella price and not have to get on a right, scale in right. front of everybody? You guys remember Bonanza? Oh, oh yeah. 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 Bonanza we had, Steakhouse. We had a Bonanza up in uh, Hibbing, and my sister was like, my parents told my sister, you got to get a job if you want a car. My sister looked for a job. For, I mean, she could not find a gig. Finally, Bonanza hires her. And she goes to work first day at Bonanza. She has a great day. Comes back the next day to Bonanza, closed the doors and locked it all up. Shut the shut her down. They and shut her down. Shut her down. The entire company folded. Bonanza didn't, did. Didn't, oh, didn't tell. That's too bad. Yeah, they didn't tell any of the workers. Everybody showed up for their shifts. Everyone's sitting out in the parking lot, going, oh. "What's up?" And they're like, "Yep, oh. we're done. No more. See you guys." Wasn't there a, there was a trifecta? Wasn't there? There was Bonanza. There was Mr. Steak, and there was the Ponderosa. Ponderosa. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there yeah. was the threesome. Yep. There yeah. you go. Yep. You remember those? Them. Remember those plates they had like only at Bonanza. Like it was like a, it was like a plastic black plastic, and then like the tray <laughs> of the sort of like uh, stainless steel tray that where the meat nestled right down in there. You guys know what oh, I'm talking about? That sounds so good. Why am I? This is this segment's making me hung. Yeah, you've only got an hour and twenty minutes. You can go oh. chow down right after that. You're good to go. Now can you I imagine. Oh, go ahead, Tom. Very quickly, I've never eaten at a Ponderosa. I've never eaten at a Mr. Steak, and I've never eaten at uh, Bonanza. Oh, Bonanza. I never ate at any of them. Yeah, you can actually buy one of those plates, Chris. Uh, there, oh. I, I found one on eBay for thirty-three bucks. Oh my God, that's way too much. It, no, 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 but no, no, no. But it, it's got like the. Uh, it says Bonanza, like it actually has the logo of Bonanza, oh. like emblazoned on the side of it. So the price is only going to go up, Chris. So if you want yeah, to invest that's true. now, that's true. I'm going to tell my wife I'm going to sink all the money we have left, which is about $33 anyway, sure. into the Bonanza plate. You need a whole set, though. Like, you can't just have one. That would be mortifying. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, so You need that red plastic cup that was, like, opaque. You couldn't really see through yes, it. Remember, yes, yeah. yes, Pizza Hut used to have a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Okay, I love this game we're doing. But do you remember for Pizza Hut had Land Before Time as its theme for, like, 50 years? It was, like, the go-to was always Land. If you had a birthday party, Land Before Time. If you got a toy, Land Before Time. <laughs> what is that? That was like there. It was a movie, and so oh, most, yeah, yeah, okay. most, you know, most uh, restaurants like McDonald's or you know Burger King, what like whatever the popular movie is. But it, pizza's like Pizza Hut was like, no, we've picked Land Before Time, <laughs> and we're just gonna come in. That's and it. It's always Land Before Time. There you go. <laughs> uh, 
What a Pizza Hut? That was another one. I don't think I've ever eaten there either. And those ones randomly had buffets too. Oh, they yeah. did. Was oh, okay. Also legit. Mm -hmm. Not all of them, but no. some of them would have them. And yeah. yeah, and it seemed like Pizza Hut was one of those where like you really had to hit the window right because unlike Pizza Ranch, which does the buffet thing all day, Pizza Hut was a very limited window. Yeah. And if you got there late, like it was just crusty and gross. Oh yeah, and, yeah. And, oh. And, <laughs> Um, Are they around anymore? Jill wrote in and says the ground round was the one you pay per pound. Oh, sure. Oh. Ground round. Okay. Yep. I still got one in St. Cloud, I believe. Really? A ground round, yeah. God. Can you imagine I think getting that? might be one in Waconia, too. Really? Oh. Yeah. Do you think they have the scale still? That would be mortifying. I, oh, yeah. I'm going to guess that one's probably sort of aged itself out of being um, acceptable anymore. Unless you want to get sued, probably. I can't. Yeah, right. Can I you cannot. imagine that? Step on the scale, fatty. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> We're going to weigh you after. We want to get all of our monies. Step on uh, the scale, fatty. On a, on a date. Just take a date. Yeah, there. right, right. Oh, uh, hold on one sec. Let me get on the scale. <laughs> I do know that um, Golden Corral or Old Country Buffet, when my kids were little, they used to do it by age. So, like, we had little, little kids, like yeah. two bucks. Like, you paid $2 for the kid to eat. You know what's funny about this? This is like the 15 minutes of places Tom has never eaten. Yeah, at. right? I've never eaten at any of these places. And I don't know why. Well, they weren't around when I was younger. Yeah. I, yeah. I think they came it. around when I was like in my late teens, maybe. Stuff like that. There was a Mr. Steak out in Robbinsdale, I know. I think it's an Asian restaurant now, I think. I'm not sure. So all of these are gone now? They're all just gone by the wayside? Well, I looked up ground round. There is, there's two in Minnesota. There's one in Worthington, and the other one is in Winona. Worthington and Oh, it's not Waconia. I yeah. thought there was one out there for a while. Maybe it turned into something else. Mrs. Steak. How about that? Mrs. Mrs. Steak, steak to you. What the hell happened to Mrs. Mr. Steak? Why don't there a Mrs. Steak? Mr. Answer steak me. died of um, uh, hardened arteries. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> well, that's nice of you to say. Uh, no, I I see. It. These would be all made magnificent new experiences for me. I should. I hope they open up again. <laughs> I would love to just take you, Tom, on a tour of random buffets. Like we just That'd go. That'd be tough. We get a get a little bus. Um, Rudy, sort of. We start at the place on Lake Street, and then we just sort of go from there, and just you know. I tour. sounds good to me. I got no problem. Listen, one thing I'm very pissed off. I'll never be able to go to David Fong's again, and that pisses me off. They I just drove down. by there the other day. Love God, that place. A, yeah, that sucks. It does suck that it's closed, but I loved going to David Fong's. But there's one I somebody told me there's a David Fong's out in like south of Burnsville or made was it what the hell's the name of that town down there with the big Lakeville? Yeah, Lakeville, that kind of area, right? Lake yeah. Lakeville, exactly. That, really? That's what I heard. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but I got to get it done, man. That's all I got to say. Right? Well, just the David Fong building is so cool. Like, it is a it, great it, building. That's why I drove by it, and uh, we were on our way to a basketball game a couple weekends ago, and like it looks exactly the same, and it's such a cool building. It's and it's just sitting there; nothing's changed. Like, still has the David Fong's Aww. all the stuff on the outside of it and everything. Damn it! I could, mm -hmm. I love David Fong's. When I worked at WDGY, I was right across 35W, right across the freeway. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was on 106th and uh, 35W is where WDGY used to be back in the day. You know what I'm saying? I don't like how those call letters go. Tom? I was just gonna say, I don't like it when you say it normally. Say it the real way. Oh, Ouija. W D. No, there's no W. There was just a D G Y. D G Y. How the hell do you even know? You're too young to know about that. Because we listen to it. I listen to it every morning. Every morning. Every morning before I get. That's my alarm to get me out of bed. <laughs> Is what you an screaming? What a phenomenal life you have. There's Thank no you. question about it. Paradise. Paradise. That's all I have to say is paradise. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. The four of us and anybody else who's on the show wants to go, because Sandy would probably want to go. We'll go on a tour, and you guys are going to have to hold my hand, because I have not eaten at a buffet in a billion years. Let's go to a bunch of different buffets for, like, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it'll be, we'll film it all. It'll be an, a new experience. Ooh, a breakfast buffet. Ooh, wee. Oh. Now you're talking? That's, yeah. That's, we could start at one of those really, really, really average breakfast buffets in one of the local <laughs> hotels. Love that. Uh -huh. I love that. I would suggest Super 8. Super 8 would be good. Yeah, that'd be, that's a good Where you get to one. make your own waffle with yes, the thing. Yes, yes, yes. Isn't that one where they pay you to stay there? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Rudy, what face are you making right He's now? Making man. a face because I'm on the road all the time, and that's where oh, I stay. They, sure. they put yeah. me up at Best sure. Western, so I'm just so used to the just the garbagey. You know, it's all. It's every now and again you get a breakfast buffet that has a hard boiled egg. Oh yeah, yeah. but and that's than, a big deal. It's a it's a it's a hard find because everything else is just like that cereal that you got to turn the crank. Yeah, you crank it into the, the oh, styrofoam yeah. bowl, and yeah, then, yeah it know. is it's oh it's so bad. The, <laughs> apples are red delicious apples. Who eats red delicious apples? They Not are me. so terrible. Uh, they have to be like violently crisp if you're gonna eat red yeah. delicious, and they yeah. rarely are. Gross. So you like the honey, honey crisp? Oh yeah. yeah, I got one in yeah. my purse. Yeah. Yeah. You got a honey crisp in your purse? Always. Works for oh, all of that. Yeah. I love apples, man. All right, Chris, you just got fired if you don't get off the show. All right, see you guys later. <laughs> Thanks a see lot, you, pal. Bye. Chris Eggert, ladies and gentlemen, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Chris Eggert will be right back in a couple of minutes. More of the show right after this. This is the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Tom Bernard here. Are you ready for some throttle therapy? Cruise the water in luxury on a brand new Bennington pontoon from Power Lodge. Enjoy sunset from the water, entertain the kids, and float on the lakes all summer long. It all starts at the Lodge, the Twin Cities' newest Bennington dealer, the Power Lodge, with locations in Brainerd, Onamia, Ramsey, and Miller Marine of St. Cloud. Hundreds of pontoons in stock across all Power Lodge locations. Your summer fun begins at Brainerd's newest Bennington dealer, the Power Lodge. Enjoy the best days of summer on your favorite lakes in a brand new Bennington pontoon from the Twin Cities' newest Bennington dealer, the Power Lodge in Ramsey. With locations in Brainerd, Onamia, Ramsey, and Miller Marine in St. Cloud, and hundreds of Benningtons in stock across all locations, the Power Lodge is your destination before you hit the lakes this summer and cruise at sunset. Fun begins at the Lodge, the Twin Cities' newest Bennington dealer, the Power Lodge. Get some throttle therapy on land and water, millermarine.com and powerlodge.com, and you can tell them Tommy sent you. Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. If you've been hurt in a car collision, it's traumatic enough. You don't need to waste time and energy on the legal stuff. Think of us as a partner who will guide you through the process. First off, you need to recover. But part of that is getting the compensation you deserve. At Bradshaw and Bryant, we'll work hard so you can get the rest you need during the trying months after a personal injury. At Bradshaw and Bryant, we understand how important it is to make our clients comfortable. So we build each client relationship on the pillars of honesty and transparency. Don't miss out on what's rightfully yours. We'll go to bat for you. For your free case consultation, please visit minnesotapersonalinjury.com. That's minnesotapersonalinjury.com. I'm Mike Bryan. I hope you're never injured in a collision. But if you are, don't sign anything until you've talked to Bradshaw and Bryant. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. With Mike Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Our timing now is just right on the money, don't you think? Professionals. We show up just when we're supposed to, the whole shooting match. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I was just told something in the hallway by a guy, walked past a guy, said hello, and he was asking about the show, how's the show going, all the rest of it, yeah. which is very, very nice. Thank very you. Very nice, yes. Um, and he also pointed out something I did not know. Now, Rudy, do you hear your, yourself on stuff like long after you cut it? What do you mean? Like, uh, like oh, TV intros kind of stuff or commercials or any of that stuff? Yeah, and a lot of times I forget about the stuff that I've done. Yes. Because Chris Seggert yep. was listening to something the other day, and he heard me do a commercial for, like, an IT computer oh, okay. school or something. I was like, did I do that? And then it, I it dawned on me, oh, yeah, nine months ago I cut that, yeah. Yeah, see, that just happened to me just now because I did not know this. Um, he said, oh, I didn't know you were the, the voice of Bally Sports North. And I said, What? Yeah, right. <laughs> I must have cut that literally, what, about 10 years ago? Sure. I mean, when did Bally Sports North start? That's going to be about 10 years, isn't it? You know, I don't think it was that long no, Maybe ago. it wasn't even that long. Maybe, I, I think it's only been around for like maybe five years tops, four well, five or five. Years, let me, let me I check. Suppose. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, so you don't get residual checks anymore? Is that the plan? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'll have to listen to it. I did not know that I was still doing the Bally Sports North intro, which is very nice of them. Wow, that company went tits up real fast. Didn't realize it was founded in 2021. <laughs> Bally Sports North? Bally Sports. Maybe they pivoted the name a little. You know how like they have to register for different things sometimes? Or Maybe. I don't know. This says, went on here in 2021 this, during a pandemic? Yeah, this says Bally Sports Regional Networks, our group of regional sports networks in the United States, blah, 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 uh, founded March 31st, 2021. I cannot. That can't be right. <laughs> hmm. 
I mean, that's less than two years ago. Yeah, let's see if there is it. Well, there's a Wikipedia on here. It looks like we've clicked on it before. Oh, really? Yeah, it says launch 2021. Jesus, that's weird. I thought that thing's been around forever. Maybe I was thinking of Bally's, the, uh, the uh, what is it, a casino the, or something? Oh, this, well, the, they had the workout place. Yeah. I like, it was a workout place? Oh, yeah. Well, maybe that's what I was thinking. Of. I like yeah. still owe them money. Yeah. Bally's, there was one in Richfield <laughs> that is like now like a, like a, a poly, not poly side, like a science tech high school. Oh, really? That is, yeah. It is, it's such a weird place. And yeah, that Bally's was awful. Well, I know I did not cut that in the last two years. There's huh. no damn way I did. So I don't know. Maybe it carried over from another market or something. Could have been. I yeah. I don't know what the hell that's all huh. about, but that's nice. I'll have to. Why is there always pounding? I don't know, but I was going to ask you, who, what voice is like the most, like the closest to yours that people sometimes confuse you as? Mm, I don't know of one. I, don't I have know a very either. weird voice. Say, I think you do as well. <clears throat> oh, well, thank you for jumping on the weird part. Unique is what she meant. Yes, unique. That's mm-hmm. exactly what she meant. Maybe. But anyway, it's nice of you to point that out, so I'll have to give it a listen and, and check it out. And But there's no way I cut that in the last two years. Hmm. I would remember that, I would think. Maybe the brain's starting to fail miserably. You think? I mean, I've been telling you this for 20 years. That's true. No, it's only been two years since 2021 you've been telling me. Yeah, since 2021. (laughs) Right when Valley started, I was like, you're slipping, but odd. Well, that is a truth. I am slipping. There's no question. Such is life. Do you feel like your memory... Is getting worse, and I ask yes. because my husband thinks that with his memory constantly. Yep, I do think it's getting worse because I think there's only so much capacity, yeah. and as you live your life, it's just more and more and more and more gets piled up in there. So you just, I think your brain starts sloughing stuff. Yeah, actually, there's science behind that. Oh, there you go. Yep, so, yeah, there is. There so it's and th- and ironically, it, it was kind of a joke how it happened when I found this out. But we were talking about how. Time, you know, when you're young, time just moves so slow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then as you get older, your brain, it seems like time just moves so fast. And the reason why that is, is because as you mentioned, Tom, your brain is just, it's, it's, it's basically just a big like dump ground yep. where it just keeps putting information in. Well, as your brain gets older, it only remembers the important stuff that you need to know. Yes, sir. And it erases all the stuff in between and it smashes those events together, making it seem like time is going faster. Yep. So I had brought that up one day on the air and I was like, you guys know why that is? And then I said it and the guy who told me was on the air with me and he goes, dude, I told you that like two weeks ago. See? I was like, oh my God, I'm there so he- sorry. <laughs> yes. See, he wasn't important to you. You yep. didn't remember that. But then big stuff, too, because the day Prince died, I was like, man, I am so upset that I never saw Prince live in concert. And then somebody sent me a picture like, good thing we saw Prince before he died. And there yeah. we were in Milwaukee at a Prince concert. And I totally forgot it. That yeah. happens. Yeah. It does happen. No question about it. How about you, sister? I mean, I feel like, well, you've always had a good memory. You can remember yeah, names, not, places. Not as, like I used to, though. But I think you still retain <laughs> things from a while ago very well. I don't, I, I've never been that way. <clears throat> I would have to say, <clears throat> I don't think I'm by any means like walking around an idiot. But like, if you, well, I'm not, I don't retain things. That, oh, yeah, well, don't <laughs> argue so hard here. Um, I can't retain things the way you do. Like, I, I have to do it very intentionally. I can't just, it doesn't just melt into me like it does with you. I was told that happened for a reason, though. It's kind of a protecting device. You protect yourself by getting more knowledge than other people do. You're like Intel all the time. Yeah, it's like Intel all the time, apparently. I didn't know that, but that's what they told me it is. You're constantly Intel all the time is a good way to put it. I feel like it's, it's so where I go. My brain gets rid of things all the time. That's good. I guess so. I don't know. Sloughing is good. All right, well, I'm, I'm sloughing. Sloughing off, that's a whole different, that's different sloughing, that's all I'm saying. Oh, I forgot to tell you about an event I went to yesterday. Love to hear it. Um, it ever heard of Hope Chest? Yeah, what is, what's that all about? So, I've heard of it. Yeah, so they had this big fashion show at the Galleria, but Hope Chest, um, they raise money for women or men that go through breast cancer and need extra Aww. money, like income coming in, <clears throat> and um, it was just a cool event they did. Uh, where they did a fashion show and you can buy, you know, things while you're there and, and, and help out. But they also have a furniture store and mound that people know really well, and that's, I'm sure, where you've heard of it. Oh, is, yeah, maybe. Yeah, and yep. you can donate yep. to it. I'm sure Catherine's donated stuff to them. But you can buy furniture, and then that uh, that money goes towards women with – or not women, men are women yeah. with breast cancer because when people get sick, they just there's a grant you can get to kind of just – 
extra income because there's things that like insurance doesn't cover or, or take care of. So yeah. yeah, it was really cool. I thought of you a couple times and I was like, there was a lot of these women telling their stories about having breast cancer and trying to still keep a household up. And I just, I just, it was just really, it was a really cool event with a lot of really cool women there. It's called Hope Chest, you said. Yep, Hope Chest. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost certain that Catherine got involved and gives them money or whatever I, she does. I feel like, yeah, I feel like her and I have talked about it, but I feel like yeah. you guys have definitely donated furniture to, um, for them to sell at their store. So Magnificent. Yeah, see, I love that kind of stuff. I Me really too. do when people work together and try to help one another like that. That's a really, really nice thing. That's it, my favorite part of humanity, actually. Me too. It was fun. So you'd have like the, like these models that are paid models come through, and then every so often, then they'd have like a survivor of breast cancer come through and tell their story and me and my sister just sobbing of course <laughs> like the yeah. one time i put on yeah. makeup in my you know the past like month and i'm just tears down my face it was really it was it's nice when you feel like there's so many negative things going on that yeah. you can put money towards make you know that like this woman was talking the biggest grant you can get is 750 dollars, and she said how that grant was she was able to save her house, like because she couldn't pay her mortgage yeah, that there month, you go. and all those things because you can't do when you're sick. That is absolutely true. Now that, that, see, that's a part of humanity. I just love that Me people too. step up. Me too. It was really lovely. Love that when human beings do step up. It's a wonderful thing. It's cool to be able to go to things like that and and feel <laughs> yeah because there's so much negative. What's happening, Pally? Robin Taylor Zander, how you doing, Robin? How's it going? for having me. Well, now that you're here, it's going very well, Pally. That's all I have to say. <laughs> you know what I mean. Well, Robin, very cool. Very cool. Guitarist for legendary band Cheap Trick, uh, the release of his debut album, The Distance. So I want to, Robin, I want to shut up and I want to hear all about The Distance. Great, great news for all of us, I'm, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. It's my first record. Um, it's about 10 years worth of uh, songwriting that I've kind of just stockpiled up on my computer and uh, just been listening to for too long. So I needed to get it out to the masses. So um, I had some time off a couple years ago and, and uh, the distance is what came out of it. Um, it's a record I did with uh, co-producer Kenny Siegel up in uh, New York. And I'm excited for everyone to hear it. This is a one. And now it's so basic. I got, I'm looking at your picture right now, Robin. What, what are you like? 12, 13 years old? I'm 30. <laughs> he goes, I'm 30. No, that's so great. Um, the, the, I just, <laughs> well, no, the reason I, because the first band I was ever in, I was 11. I do remember that. But I was a big 11, apparently. That was the whole deal. But, I mean, it's been your whole life, hasn't it, Robin? Obviously, uh, the family you come from and all the rest of it. Isn't it wonderful to succeed at something you've experienced your whole life and you've always wanted to succeed at? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, I grew up around music. My dad's a musician. He's a touring musician, so he was gone a lot when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Whenever I was off of work, I'd, I'd go, you know, pack up a bag and I'd go travel with Dad for a few months, you know, during the summers. So I always wanted to be a musician, um, watching watching him do it all this time. So, yeah, definitely gratifying, to say the least. Not as wonderful. I remember one time you're... Uh, you're not, um... I was trying to think of how many years. This is many, many years ago. Well, I suppose not many, many years ago, but probably five, six, seven years ago. We had a bunch of guys. It just happened one of those deals, Robin. You, you ever go on tour and you happen to be in the same town as like two or three other big acts and you somehow, either at a radio station or wherever it is, you run into one another? You ever experienced that? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I've been on tour in um, uh, many cities and uh, didn't realize that someone else was there and I walk in the elevator and there, there they are, you know, <laughs> um, that, that happens a lot, especially during the summer tours. Cause so many bands go out on the summers. You'll, you'll overlap tours with other people that you're familiar with. So that, yeah, that happens all the time. We love it. We, those of us in radio love when that happens because at one time I was trying to think of who the third band was. Cause it was your dad. It was, uh, it was, uh, Gene Simmons came in. Oh, by the way, I got to mention this, Robin, you ever met Gene Simmons? Yes, I have. <laughs> I'm assuming you have. Gene is yeah. a very tall, pretty, he's a pretty, you know, broad-shouldered man, all the rest of it. And we're sitting there talking. We're kind of gathered in this one room, and he decides he's going to sit on the desk. And what he didn't realize, it was one of those kind of desks that they attach right to the wall. So, in other words, it doesn't have any front legs, you know what I mean? Oh, wow. 
didn't work out too well, Rob. <laughs> Never get watching Gene Simmons crash to the ground. That was quite the experience, but you know. Oh man, I can't imagine. Did you? Sorry, I missed out on that. Well, next time, Rob. Robin, how old were you when you realized this? This is what I want to do. Oh, uh, I sense as as early as I can remember. Yeah, probably the first time I picked up a, a guitar. Um, uh, it was probably when I realized that's what I wanted to do. I think also just watching my my dad do it for so long mm-hmm. as a kid. I just I just I was on the side of the stage basically, you know, mimicking what they were doing on stage. You know, since I was a baby, I I just loved it. I thought it was fun, and I I never really saw it as like my dad's job. I saw it as like a just something to get into. You know, that mm-hmm. I loved to do, and I I got good at when I was a kid. I've got good at a few instruments. I was able to play drums and guitar and bass and a little bit of piano and sing. So I kind of just put that all together. And over time, um, my interest just kind of grew from there. It's a, I love this, uh, by the way, this, uh, this line that's in your, uh, the folder. Uh, for the past seven years, Robin Taylor Zander has been playing rhythm guitar in his father's band, Cheap Trick. During downtime from the road, the younger Zander quietly plugged away the songs for his debut album the distance which is out now uh you are gonna i'm i'm assuming you're coming are you gonna come to town anytime soon robin um i'm coming through um well on my own i'm not i don't have any dates that are are confirmed yet for my my Mm -hmm. solo release but cheap trick is touring all across the country um up and through uh until october this year we're doing dates with uh, rod stewart um we're doing dates um all across. So yeah, we'll, we'll be coming to a town near you. <laughs> oh, you got to come in. I mean, if you're, if you're going to be in town, you should come in. I'd love to sit and talk to you face to face. Oh always, yeah. Sure. Been... If I've got a day, if I got a day to do it, I'll do it. Robin, honest to God, it, it, I think it does so much for people to, to hear, I mean, cheap trick, how, how many years cheap, cheap trick been around now? It's, it's been a hell of a long time. Um, 49 years. Honest to God. I didn't know it was that long. I knew it was long. 49 years. Really yeah. Robin. 1974. God, that's see, that's a wonderful story. But to sit down in a in a studio on microphone with people like you or your father, or whomever, uh, you know, I, I mentioned Gene Simmons. All, to sit and listen to those stories face to face with someone that's going out over the air, that's a that's a, a very interesting, thrilling moment. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it as much as we do. Oh, we do for sure. Yeah, I, I enjoy uh, performing and. I always will. Uh, it's a lifelong addiction. <laughs> no, I could understand that. I did not know. So they're they're telling me that you picked up your first guitar at four years old. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's when I. F- oh, it was a ukulele. So <laughs> of course it was not a full on guitar. But yeah, I, I started <laughs> strumming away when I was about four or five years old, and um, that was the first thing I picked up. So was it tiptoe through the tulips? Is that what it was? <laughs> yeah, something like that. It was, um, I think I was actually, I mean, I grew up in Florida, so uh, we had a lot of ukuleles uh, laying around the house and uh, guitars and stuff, so that's where I picked it up. So not exactly where, but wh- what? Uh, where did you grow up uh, generally in, in Florida? Uh, Tampa area. Oh, yeah, great area. That's a magnificent yeah. area. So you're you're out. You're on the road. You got the distance coming out. I want to hear all about the distance. I know we only got a couple of minutes left, about three minutes left here, and you got a very very busy man. So I would like to hear your own descriptor of the distance. Um, so the distance of the record kind of was written over ten years, and I I used to live in Nashville for a number of years, and most of the songs came from that kind of time period, from about 2015 up until. Uh, right before it got released. So um, it's basically just all my original material, 11 songs, and uh, you'll hear a lot of influence. You'll hear Cheap Trick in there a Mm -hmm. little bit. You'll hear British Invasion kind of influences, Beatles and the the Stones and the Who, the Kinks. You'll hear a lot of um, those kind of sounds, British Invasion, 60s, 70s music. Um, But I recorded it in New York, and um, I co-produced it with someone, uh, his name's Kenny Siegel, and uh, he owns a recording studio that I worked in. And then uh, Jack Douglas, who um, worked with uh, Errol Smith and John Lennon and Cheap Trick, um, he mixed it and mastered it with Jay Messina. So um, 
we've uh, we put it out uh, April 21st, and uh, we're really excited for everyone to, to hear it finally after all these years. And it's just exciting stuff, man. I can't wait for you to hear it and everyone else. Oh, it's wonderful. And, and I know you got to go, but I just got to get very, very quickly. I'm looking at the list of your influences, and I think this is very, very important because people need to understand uh, your influences include the Beatles, Robert Johnson, Beck, Elliot Smith, the Rolling Stones, the Who, David Bowie, Jimi Hendrix, uh, you know, the Flame and Lips, T-Rex. I think it's very, very important for people to understand that because you're 30 years old, you don't go, well, I don't really care who recorded, uh, you know, anything before 2005. I mean, you went all the way back. You no, went back I've, many years. Oh, yeah. I have I mean, I lived off of my, my parents' uh, record collection. And then from there, kind of just did my own research. But, yeah, I've, I listen to all sorts of stuff. I mean, those are just my direct influences. Right, but I, I right. love all, all kinds of music. I'll, I'll listen to anything, you know, from jazz to classical to rock to pop and blues, everything, man. You know, even though it's only been 53 years, I'm still pissed off at Jimi Hendrix for dying. I got to tell you that. <laughs> yeah. I think God. we all are. Oh, my God, what a supreme talent that man was. Robin, I cannot wait to have you in studio. Come sit down. We'll schmooze. I promise you'll have a good time. Robin Taylor Zander, ladies and gentlemen. The album's called The Distance. Cannot wait to hear it. And please come back soon, Robin. Great talking to you, sir. Oh, thanks. Anytime. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Robin Taylor. What a nice young man. Yeah, he was great. Look at his picture, though. He looks like he's about 15. I know. I, <laughs> I looked jealous. him up, and I was like, oh, my God, you're a baby. He is a baby. But, no, it's cool when he references all of his influences and what, you know, he's listening to and stuff. I think I think this would be right up your alley. It sounds like he really includes a lot. It'd be fun to hear it. Were you there when Gene Simmons crashed through the top of that desk? Yeah, I wasn't. I thought in, you were. I, I wasn't in the room, but I remember after you said that story, I was like, oh yeah, I remember that. I remember whose room that was. And then he talked about it forever because he's like, well, my desk is still ruined because of this guy. So that was pretty funny. Well, people might not know this, but Gene Simmons is what, about 6'2", probably about yeah. 230? He is, yeah. He's, he's a he's, big guy. He's a big guy. And it's so funny. He winked at every woman. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, he would have two <laughs> seconds. You know, I'd be sitting there <clears throat> taking a picture or writing a note for we're doing our social media stuff at the time. And every so often, he'd pick a new girl or a new girl, a new woman. And he'd, no, let's go with girl. And he'd wink, Way to go. And you're like, and he winked at me. And I was like, it, like, but Clem for a second. I was like, oh. And I was yeah. like, oh, wait, no, I don't actually care. <laughs> You know, it's been a long time now, but I used to get a call from him once in a while after that. Because so, that was, what, about 15 years ago? Although, no, I don't I think it was two that years ago was 20 years ago. So yeah. what is that? It wasn't that long ago. Because... It wasn't? No. It was... It was... Because I... I want to say it was, I bet you, seven years ago. Yeah, that's probably about right. That is, yeah, that's probably about right. And so I used to get a call once in a while from Gene Simmons. He would just call me out of the blue... And you didn't even have to look at the number or see who was calling because it always started like this. You go, hello? Nothing. You go, hello? Yes, Tom. How are you doing today? You're on the phone with Gene Simmons. You're going to be on the phone for about three hours because he puts these huge pauses between all the sentences. Oh, my God. I had the daunting task of having to edit a podcast that he was on one time. Jesus oh my Christ. God. Oh, I celebrated three birthdays before I got that goddamn thing done. God. I could not. That is true. Oh. I could not be married to him. Like, oh, no. I would sit and go, no, we don't have time. We don't have to. We can't live our lives like this. Oh. Took forever and just and, and over enunciate things. Oh yeah, because I had meatballs. Meatballs. Yeah. Oh my God, Tom, get on with it, please. Gene, move on. Um, That's was, so great. You had the exact same experience yes. that I did. It was forever. 2017 is when he came in. When we met, when he came in that time. So six years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe even five and a half, five, yeah. whatever. It was that was quite the experience because Cheap Trick was there and they, they, you know, Kiss was there and I, there were a couple other bands there too. I can't remember who else was there, but there, that was that was a hell of a, a period back then. But it's so great that you had the exact same spirit experience with Gene Simmons. Jesus, I wanted to call. <laughs> See, I would yes. end my life. Yeah. My ADHD could never, so could never. Wonderful. 
great guy, though. He's a very nice person. You, you're a pleasant, yeah. mm-hmm. pleasant was, guy. We had no complaints. He was lovely. I know people that were very, very, very excited about him coming, and he gave them time and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, he definitely – I don't know if I have a feeling he still slays. I think he's still yeah. very much so a ladies' man because the winking man. I was just like weirded out where I'm like, me? Winking out? Oh, okay. Like, what do you want? Am I supposed to wink back? <laughs> mm-hmm. Or like, uh, okay. Well, Brittany. No, no, no. You, you must understand I am the head of Cheap Trick. No, wait a minute. It's Kiss. That's what it is. <laughs> I mean, okay. I Whatever is it? Forgot my band's <laughs> name. I would never. I could never. Like that would end me. I, I talking to a slow talker and having yeah. to. I mean, my I twitch. I go, how? First, how? I know. First time I ever met Gene Simmons. The old Highway Twelve, which is now three ninety four. The old Lincoln Dell that used to be on the corner there. Remember when the Lincoln Dell was right there just west of Highway 100? I mean, I know because you've explained it, but I definitely was oh, not yeah. around well, for Lincoln true. Dell. Do you remember that at all? I don't. No, you were living up north then. Mm-hmm. Sure not. But I'm sitting at the old Lincoln Dell that used to be on Highway 12, which is now 394. I'm having lunch with Gene Simmons and Sid Hartman. <laughs> Wow. There's oh a combo my for God. you. You should have been there. That was a hell of a conversation. Yeah. I'm not kidding, because it literally was, well, Sydney, what is it that you do? Oh. Let me just tell you something. I was oh. down last week. I was talking to a guy. It was, the, I just sat back and watched. Of course. I just sat back and watched the whole thing. You are the viewer at that point. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, my God, what an ex. <laughs> Experience it was that wonderful. was. It was wonderful. It really was. How long was that lunch? About three hours. I believe it. They had some of the best matzo ball soup you've ever had in your Yum. entire life. Why do we keep fantastic. talking about food today? Well, we can go to the Crossroads. They have fantastic matzo ball soup at Crossroads. Right. I love that place. Well, that's kind of on your way home. I agree. If you go down Hopkins Crossroad, it's right there. <laughs> well, it is. That's it where is. it is. I mean, it's a, let me just tell you something. Here. <laughs> ah, Brittany Artisan. What's the name now? It's a different one. Uh, Hagen yeah, different Artisan. name. Hagen something. Different name every week. But watching Sid Hartman arguing with Gene Simmons, because they didn't agree on anything. They so, didn't? No. No, they agreed. I mean, it wasn't hostile. No. It's just, well, I didn't see it quite the same way. I mean, that's why we were there for three hours, because mm-hmm. it took an hour to get out one oh, sentence, for Christ's sake. That would... How do you get out of a conversation? Like, the thing is, too, when I talk to really slow talkers and they're saying something I, I know, I try to finish the sentence for them, which is very rude. They'll be like, make sure when you edit this. Yep, edit it. Make sure I put the, the tail end in the front end, tail in the front end. And you try to finish it, and they're like, no, no, no. I need to say it with my own voice. It's like I die inside. I know we got to take a break here, but I want to close with a Sid Hartman story that I think I've told you guys before, but I'm not sure... Um, one time Sid calls me to come over. He, he used to have a place over on St. Croix. Mm-hmm. So I went over there, and there's an ice cream shop there by the ski lifts and on the ski hills and all that. Uh, okay. I can't remember the name of the, the ice cream shop. <clears throat> but we went over there because, uh, Bernard, you want to get some ice cream? Uh, we go over there. It's phenomenal. Sounds good, Sid. So we're sitting there, and we're, we're eating our, our – because Sid and I grew up in the same neighborhood. He was a little earlier than me, obviously, by – 35 years or whatever, mm-hmm. but we grew up in the exact same neighborhood. Uh, and Sydney, I don't know if people know this or not, but had a real problem. His father uh, was an embarrassment to him because he was a Jewish man who drank a lot. Mm. And that's, that's not really, they don't give that a big hug in some communities, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But Sid's talking to me about this, that, and the other thing. And then we go on to start talking about his mother and how much he adored his mother, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. This is Sid Hartman now, right? Yeah. So he's eating his ice cream cone. He's talking to me about his mother. And then all of a sudden he turns his head to the left and he's licking his ice cream cone and he turned around and tears are streaming down his face. This is Sid Hartman now. So if people think he was insensitive, you're an asshole because he was not. Turned around and looked at me, tears running down his face and he said, I wish my mama had never died. Oh like, my God! Don't do that to oh me. Oh my God! It was so sweet. God, it was sweet. Oh. So sit that aside to him. If you knew him, he could be a very, very sweet, caring man. You I, know. I mean, is that 
I would assume people know that, right? Like even monsters Some don't. have their, you know what I mean? Like everybody has their people, right? I you assume would hope, so. No. I would you know. I hope so. One could only hope. We'll take a break here. Be right back in a couple of minutes. Uh, score doors fill back mm. Will join us right after this. This is the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Listen live at TomBernardShow.com or on the Tom Bernard Show app. This is Bob Sansevier, and I want to tell you about Dave Bialki from Bialki Law. Dave represented my wife, Mary, when she had a significant workplace injury. She was very happy with the job Dave did. If you have a work-related injury and have Dave represent you, I'm betting you'll be happy too. Dave is a down-to-earth guy. He grew up in northern Minnesota, rides a Harley, and worked various jobs doing concrete, electrical, plumbing, roofing, and carpentry work. Dave works for people with work-related injuries. If you work construction, or anywhere for that matter, and you're hurt or even just hurting, you should talk to Dave. Let's face it, our bodies wear out. If your body is worn out from work, if your knees or back or shoulders hurt from things you do at work, do what Mary did. Call Dave and talk to him about it at Bialki Law to set up a free initial conversation consultation. The number to call is 763-571-2410. That's 763-571-2410. Or visit BialkiLaw.com. That's B-I-A-L-K-E Law.com. The new Tom Bernard Morning Show is proud to have partners like North American Banking Company, Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and attorney and advertiser Dave Bialki. I've been advertising on Tom Bernard shows for years. I like Tom, not just because he's a good guy, but because the ad I run on his show bring me new clients that are hurt at work and need legal help. Tommy B works for me. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com keyword partner. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, and now we bring back from last Friday the power trio Kent Herbeck, Jay Moore, and of course, Phil Mackey. Yes, three three mega superstars mega super historically <laughs> in the sports and entertainment realm. Yes, wasn't that a ball? God, that was fun, <laughs> man. Yeah, Jay Moore, man. So he's in. in there's so many things. Mean, you guys had him in studio for the whole hour, mm-hmm. but he's now engaged to Jeannie Buss, the owner of the Los Angeles Lakers. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Think about from going from being um, what was his character in Jerry Maguire? Uh, Sugar. Bob Sugar. Mm-hmm. Bob Sugar, going from from playing Bob Sugar thirty years ago to being engaged to the owner of the Los Angeles Lakers. Well, she no. doesn't have any money though. No, no she's broke. not at all. No, no. Jay told this story one time where she's where he said uh, I got engaged to Jeannie Buss and she said, "Listen, I might be a billionaire, but you're not." Oh, yeah. there you so go. There is the reason why <laughs> I'm hanging at the mall and doing she, comedy. Guys, mm. and I know this is like bad to like add on, but she's like the she's gorgeous. Yeah, like gorgeous. Well, good yeah. for him. Well, she she was with Phil Jackson for like ten or fifteen years. I right? mean, sixteen years altogether. Really? We looked it was up. It? Yeah, sixteen years. Yeah. Yeah, but then you get to a point. There's got to be like a fifteen or twenty. Well, there, I, there's probably a fifteen or twenty year age difference, but they look like they're thirty years apart. Jeannie Buss and, and Phil Jackson, right? Mm-hmm. You just kind of get to a point where yeah. you're like, all right, Phil's yeah. like eighty two, and uh, I still have some prime years left. So she. She finds Jay Moore. By the way, you guys are telling Sid Hartman stories. Yes, sir. Um, so I feel like everyone has 1,500 different, like, Sid Hartman stories that Probably. they could rattle yeah. through. I remember the, the first – so I, you know, I, I've i known, I mean, tragically, you know, Sid – well, not tragically. He lived 100 years. Mm-hmm. So Sid lived a good life. So I probably yeah. don't need to use the word tragically. But um, I probably knew him for about 20 years toward the end as a young media member and being in press sure. boxes and whatnot. But the first time I ever remember encountering Sid, and I feel like everyone has a story like this too. I was driving, this has got to be probably 20 20 years ago or so, and I'm driving down 55, and I'm at the left turn lane of the Winnetka intersection. And uh, and you're waiting for the the green arrow. So I'm in the front of the Mm -hmm. line, ready to turn left, turning left from 55 onto Winnetka, (laughs) and I I get the green arrow. And I start, Uh-oh. I start, so again, it's a green arrow. It's not a green light. I have the right of way to green yes. arrow. Nobody else should be. So I take my left and barreling in, not even stopping from the other Ooh. side, barreling into the lane and turning. And I slam on the brakes in the middle of the intersection as this big black Cadillac oh, yeah. tur- you know, turns right coming from the other side. And I'm just like, you know, 
I have like uh, like diet road rage. I'm not going to actually do anything, <laughs> but I definitely want to drive up and like look and right. see, you know, which my wife says, you need to stop doing that. Someone's going to pull a sawed off shotgun out and you're going to be done. But but I, I'm like, I got I to gotta see who cut me off. Who's in this black Cadillac? And I drive up, I look over and it's, you know, 82 year old Sid Hartman. <laughs> <laughs> Not a shock. Not a shock happened to Catherine the first time she ever met Sid. We went to a gopher basketball game together, Sid, Catherine, and me. And he picked us up. Uh, you ever see the back of Sid's car, the back seat of Sid's car? It I don't think so. It was folders and papers from the seat to the ceiling. <laughs> you could not get in the back seat of his car. There was no room, right? Yeah. So I get in, and then Catherine's sitting on my lap in the front seat. And then Sid pulls one. He said, well, <clears throat> we got to get over there. We're going to be late. I'll just take a left here. Against a one way, he takes a left. <laughs> and I said, Sid, what are you doing? He goes, I do whatever I want. Yes. <laughs> he just literally thought, I'll do he whatever had the, I want. It, the, the Sid rules? The Sid rules. Yeah, but, he did. But then, like you said, he, would, he had this soft, kind side to him. He did. And I remember, so the first real big break I got in the industry was when when the Hubbards said, "Hey, a uh, 24 year old punk kid sports guy, do you want to do a daily talk show with Patrick Royce?" There you go. We're looking to get a little younger. We're going to bring in Tom Pelissero, Phil Mackey, get you oh, know, bring sure. you guys in with the Joe Sutres and the Patrick Royces. And of course, it took me about a half a second to say, <laughs> "Ah, yes, I would." <laughs> Works. That seems like a what's the catch, right? Were you a newspaper guy at the time? Uh, I was a dot com writer. Oh, dot com writer. So, okay, there you go. I was, I was, I, I wrote, I covered the Vikings and the Twins for for KFAN dot com, and then did weekend oh, radio okay. shows. This is from like 2005 through 2010, and so I think we were probably a couple years in to the to the Royce and Mackey show. And if you've ever been in the Twins press box when Sid's doing his thing, oh, he's, yeah. he's, it's like a roast of everyone <laughs> in the press box. No one is safe. The the opposing team PR people. He's just yep. you know. And he's always got that that uh, shit eating grin on his face. Yep. Just, and so he's going he's he's going through literally roasting everyone. He always had a Mr. Something nickname, you know, Mr. It's Mr. Oh. So and so. <laughs> Mr. So and so. He used to call me Mr. Stats because I was the the statistical writer guy. Sure. But he's just roasting everyone and I and, and he's coming down the line and I'm not really sure like, even though I've been in press boxes with him at that point for several years, I wasn't sure if he actually knew who I was or if he just called me Mr. Stats. But he, he, like, breaks character. He comes right up to me, just face-to-face. -face. He breaks character, and he goes, Hey, I just want to tell you, you do a hell of a job on that radio oh, program see. with Patrick. <clears throat> there you go. No one else heard it. It was just, he just came right up fairly quietly and said, Hey. And I'm like, hey, what? Oh, my God, he's going to roast me. You do a hell of a job on that radio show with Patrick. Keep up the good work. And he, and he taps the... Taps the counter twice and moves on his way. So and like, you drive wow. like a maniac. Yeah. And you drive like a maniac. You almost the other killed part. me on 55 of <laughs> You, you know what's so great? You know what's so great about that story is if you ever had, a, had a, you were lucky enough to work with Sid or meet Sid or got to know Sid, as, you know, whatever, and you didn't know Chad, they're nothing alike. Not yeah. one no. thing do they have in common. Isn't that yeah. weird? Ch so, Chad, I used to intern for Chad back, oh, okay. you know, as a 19, 20 year old. And uh, I, I love, I mean, Chad, so Chad and I are both big, I wouldn't even say closet. We're just out in the open professional wrestling fan nerds, oh, yeah, too. Yeah. <clears throat> so he was, he was great for the early part of my career. But they aren't, yeah, Chad is, Chad is much more just sort of mild. And maybe he observed <laughs> some well, things, too. <laughs> that's a possibility. I love Chad. Chad's one of my favorite people in the world. Very, too, very man. smart man. Yeah, Very smart too. guy. But can you imagine growing up under the umbrella of Sid Hartman? Boy, yeah. a lot of pressure, man. Yeah, it think. would be. I mean, think about that in any industry, right? Like, I don't know if you guys saw over the weekend, uh, LeBron James' son announced he's going to go play college basketball at USC. So he's going to go play for a year. Bronny James is his name. Yeah. Yep. Can you imagine growing up in the shadow? So, all right, uh, well, here's your basketball career about to start. Your dad is LeBron James. <laughs> See, I didn't have to and worry so, about that thing, Phil. I didn't have to worry. <laughs> Your dad's Bob Bernard. You know, who gives a rat's ass? Good, <laughs> good for you. Yes, yeah, so you can carve your carve your own path. And so now I think I think Bronny is ranked. He's you know, they have all these you know prospect rankings. He's like the tenth best. He's projected to be maybe the tenth draft pick in uh in a couple of years. And people are like, oh, 
Why isn't he? Uh, why isn't he better than that? He's, he's one of the ten best young basketball players in the world, but he's not LeBron James. <laughs> well, that's can he be? Do you think? Does he have the talent to be? Uh, I haven't. Why? Well, honestly, haven't. Why? Well, I think he's oh, okay. he's probably going to be a, like a good role player or something in the NBA. But oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't, my, Michael Jordan's. I don't think Michael Jordan's kids ever made it to. No, like they never played basketball at that level. Although, isn't Michael Jordan's son dating Scottie Pippen's ex-wife? Did um, you guys see this? Yeah, yes. of course I have because it's Real Housewives of Miami, and her what? name is okay. Larsa Pippen, and he came to the reunion. And she said they have sex three times a night, which is oh, so right. insane. Uh-huh. Sure. Michael Jordan's son Correct. is having sex three times a night yep. with Scottie Pippen's ex-wife. Correct. You believe Just that? want to clarify that. Nobody's having sex three times a night. No. Nobody. No. no. No, that's aggressive. That's well, how old, how old is the – what's the age True. difference? True. Um, I don't know. I looked it up once, and then she clarified that – she didn't know him as a kid very well, so it's not that weird. Oh, that makes it not weird. Yeah, so you're welcome. Yeah, it's not that weird. <laughs> because I didn't know you when you were nine. Uh, it's ex- we met as adults. It yeah. would be weird though. Can you imagine if she if she was around, you know, family I cookouts know. at the Jordans and uh, do, oh look, it's little uh, eight year old uh, what's his name, and six, now they're together six, having yeah. sex Senior three age, times a yeah. night. Apparently, I was going to say to be fair, Scottie Pippen probably married young. You know, he married a girl who was young. Yeah, because it's yeah. only a 16-year yeah. age gap, which is oh, okay. that's okay. not bad at all. Oh. But it's we- the dynamics are weird. Can we acknowledge that's weird? <laughs> yeah. It seems like revenge or something for, you know, it almost feels like <laughs> yeah. it, like something Michael Jordan would do on purpose. You know, Scottie Pippen said some bad things about me in that, uh, that documentary from three years ago. Let's deploy one of my kids to his ex-wife. <laughs> Well, and Larsa is the queen of petty, so I wouldn't put it past her either. Wow. Oh, you know this woman? And not, I mean, because of Real Housewives, I've no. never met her. Oh, on, that's right. You said she's on Real Housewives. I, I, if I knew Larsa Pippen, oh, my God. Uh, I I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going with the name Larsa Pippen. It ain't happening. Well, she is a not getting rid of that last name. Even well, I suppose, yeah, that's true. Probably yeah. should have so Yeah, do, wait, if they get married, does she take, does, does this come full circle and she takes the Jordan last name? What if she was Larsa Pippen Jordan? Oh, the hyphen, yes. OMG. <laughs> They need to reproduce. Mm-hmm. Tom, you need to get into the Real Housewives. Pick you got to just pick yeah. one of the cities. B- yeah. Maybe whether it's Miami, Beverly Hills, Utah got pretty dramatic there for a couple of years too. So, but how did they get yeah. dramatic? Something interesting. Well, one of them got arrested. Utah? One of them got arrested for like I can't remember what the felony was, but live on the not live, but like they were they were oh, take a bus trip on some weekend. I don't know. Listen uh, to me right now, breaking Phil, down. Phil, yeah. you've never been so attractive to me in your whole life. I have to say, I went, you're That's verging funny. on the on hot right now. Yes. Um, yeah, it was a big, Jen Shaw was supposed to go on this bus trip, and they, uh, the, the FBI swarmed the bus, and just minutes earlier, she got the call to leave, so she you know, got out of there. On air, this all happened, which was yeah. wild. Why and, did the FBI swarm their bus? Oh, because she what ended was the up. Crime? She's well, like she, been. It's more like a pyramid scheme, like oh. through some marketing, some like fake marketing company or something that she ran. It was thousands. She ended up scamming thousands of elderly people. She had a. Oh. Um, yeah, she had one of those like telemarketing where she would sell the lead and t- sell vulnerable adults information. I have a question for you. So they picked this woman who did that to star on a TV show? Well, they didn't know. Nobody knew. You know, oh, she, so nobody knew she was doing nobody it. Nobody knew she oh, was doing okay. that. Yeah, and then she's serving time currently. Really? Because, yeah, like big Whoa. time. Like I think she's doing almost 20 years in federal prison. So what's, wow. her, what's her name? now? What do they call her now, Phil? A, a young woman in prison. What's the name? And it's real, by the way. I'm not making this up. I heard this by visiting my friends in prison. <laughs> I do. I, I grew up with a lot of guys that went to prison. I just happened that way. Or well, actually, my, my dad had a friend who we visited in jail when I was a kid too. So I I can't laugh at you. What's the name of a woman in prison? Anybody huh. know? Did anybody know? No. You ready? Caged Heat. Ooh. <laughs> I've seen that movie. <laughs> yeah, there's a movie called Caged Heat. I've seen that movie. You're right. Mm-hmm. That, there is a movie named mm-hmm. Caged Heat. Mm-hmm. But that's what. So they you call so it. you had you you visited because I always I've always kind of kept that quiet. That so one of my dad my dad was a. Oh, you guys were talking about alcoholism on uh, on Friday. My dad was the first half of his. He lived eighty years. The first half of his life were just a complete disaster, blur, mm-hmm. some homeless years in there, and then oh, he got right, wow. got sober for the last forty years. But you know, because and he made some good friends who also got clean right, and sober. Right. And one of them, we would go, we would go visit. It was a 
it was like a minimum to medium security prison somewhere in the middle of Wisconsin. But he would take me to go visit Kurt. And my mom was always, they were divorced. My mom was a, oh. l- a little mortified, like, wait, you're taking <laughs> Philip where for a weekend trip? Yeah. And uh, I always thought, I, I'm going to keep that one quiet, that I, we would go you know, five times a year to visit one of my dad's best friends wow. in jail. But, yeah. So, you know, this is a great example, Phil, why they can't keep going with this. Well, we all grew up the same and we're all the No, we're not. We had t- completely different experiences and we're not the same kind of people. They got to get away from this. Well, you need to do it like everyone else. Well, it's not going to work. Because, and I didn't know, I thought my life was like everybody else's when I was a kid, right? You, that's what you think. It's like everybody, like, I've known people that, several people that went to prison and I would go visit them. I know a few people who got murdered. I knew even more people who murdered somebody. I mean, it's just where I grew up. Yeah. But you think, because you're a young person, you think this is how everybody grows up, Right. Yeah, although I think every kid should spend, uh, you know, at least one or two long weekends around jail. Oh, know, yeah. Really, <laughs> oh, yeah. It grizzles you. It grizzles you. I won't say her name, but she was the head guard when I used to go up to Stillwater and visit a friend of mine. And whenever you see a guy walking down the, the hallway with one of their pockets hanging out or both of their pockets hanging out, that's a gang symbol. You're in this gang or that gang. and The left pocket's one, the right pocket's another. Both pockets is a third gang. And this woman who was the, the, the head guard... And I, like I said, I won't say her name. She was a huge listener to the KQ morning show. That's the one thing. All the guards up there listened to KQ. Every one of them listened to that morning show, which is hilarious. But she was about probably 5'4", maybe 5'5". Five, five. Not a big woman. Get your goddamn hands out of your pocket. And she went after those guys. Like It was wonderful to watch, man. It was so cool to watch her go after those inmates. It was phenomenal. That feels like a like a Curb Your Enthusiasm episode yeah. waiting to begin. Where t- like, like Tom walks in and had, you know, he, he pulled his wallet out of his left pocket and the pocket's hanging out. And all of a sudden, he gets approached by five other inmates. I'm not a crib. I'm not a crib. I'm not a crib. <laughs> well, that's it. I'm not a crib. I'm not that's a crib. exactly <laughs> it. That's exactly right. I know you got to go in one minute, so I got to close. My favorite story I have a friend named Dale who was a guard at Stillwater Prison. I knew a lot of guards, too, by the way, because they used to, they all lift, lifted weights. We all lifted weights together. It was like football players, wrestlers, guards at the prison, and me. That yeah. Was, it was that kind <laughs> of deal, Tom, right? Tom's just like wearing the bar. His legs are oh, kicking. Oh, those guys are so damn strong. But um, Dale was a very big, very strong man. Great guy. And they used to test the equipment on him. Like he got tased. He was one of the first people to ever get tased just to see if it would work on a guy that big and muscular, right? My favorite was, though, they had a new rubber ball cannon that came out. You know, those they shoot rubber balls instead of bullets. Uh, still... They came up with a new one. They said, well, Dale, would you get up against the wall? We just want to test this on you and see. He goes, well, what are you talking about? And he goes, well, we just want to shoot you with the rubber ball cannon <laughs> and then see how it works. Because if it works on you, it'll work on anybody, which is true, right? He goes, nah, wait a second. He says, why don't we do this? I'm going to stand to the side and you shoot it at the wall because I just want to see how fast it's moving. And if you miss and hit me right in the crotch or something, I want to know and blah, blah, blah. Apparently, he stepped aside, they shot the wall, and put a big hole in the wall. And he goes, oh, my God. Ain't happening. <laughs> You're not shooting me with that cannon. That's all there is to it. He may not have uh, <laughs> lived to see another shift at work. It would have hurt. I can guarantee you that. It would have <laughs> hurt. Apparently, it, it, it literally could knock people out because of the pain. Oh, my God. That's what I heard anyway. Why well, do you have to go so early? It's too early for you to leave. Well, we didn't even talk twins. You know, the twins. Uh, they, There's they, a reason they lose, for that, Phil. They, they lose back-to-back <laughs> series, but they're still in first place. Yep. They're two and a half games up on the Guardians, and uh, and and life is good. They're the only team above 500 in the division. Yes, they are, and they. I don't think they'd be in first place in any other division. No, they wouldn't. In fact, uh, the yep. Yankees are in last place in the American League East, and they have. Let's see here. I think they're the Twins are one game up on the Yankees. <laughs> And they're in last place. The Yankees are in last place in the American <laughs> Yankees. So, it, hey, here, cheers to a crappy division. It no apologies. My, well, no, you're right, and hopefully we'll adjust and all the rest of it. But th- that six-game series was horrendous. I mean, it was just it was bad. Rough. Well, they can't hit. No, they can't. That's the problem. That's true. They, they have one of the two or three best pitching staffs in baseball, but yes. they just, you know, I mean, they, they almost got no hit yesterday. It's a bunch of wet, rolled-up newspapers that have replaced the bats, apparently. Yeah, one hit, right? 
one goddamn hit, and as Bob was, Uecker would say. Uh, was it in Kirilov? <laughs> yes, Kirilov broke up the no-hitter. That's exactly what I thought. I watched the damn game. I sat through that whole nine innings of suffering <laughs> watching my team just come apart at the seams because Cleveland didn't do a damn thing after the first inning either. No. Well, they didn't there. need to. That's the thing. You score no, a run in the first true. inning against the Twins, you just kick your feet up. And <laughs> just relax. Hang out for three hours. All right, Palomino. Uh, by the way, it was great to have you on the air t- with Jay Moore and Ken Herbeck. And the three of you, that was a great bit of radio, man, or podcasting, I guess, at this point. Yeah, younger Phil Mackey keeps needing to be uh, pinched with some of these, <laughs> some of these guests. Man. You're going to hang out with Bob Sugar and Kent Herbeck. Okay. There you go. Remind me tomorrow, uh, Mackey, that we got to sit down and chat about the Hall of very good. Not oh, the, not a fame. One of my, that's actually one of my favorite topics. Do you know, yes. what, it, do you know what it is? No. Do you, Mackie, do you know what it is? The Hall of Very Good? Are you good? talking about like, like, like baseball player Hall of Very Good or something different? Yeah, so that was the thing that Jay Moore wanted to play all weekend at House of Comedy in the green room was <laughs> we all had to come up with people that, you know... Aren't in, were good, but not in the Hall of Fame, and you had to build a team around mm-hmm. it. So yeah. you were naming guys like Moises Alou. You were naming oh, guys sure. like David Justice. And, man, I couldn't keep up because it was him and my brother-in-law, and they're just like sports aficionados. Just, I mean, just rattling off guys I've never even heard of. Moise Salou, one of my favorite players in the 90s because, I don't know if you guys knew this, in order to build calluses on his hands, he would piss on his hands. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's very common. Yeah, I don't know why. That's how they I think get that. the. That's how I get the calluses hardened on my hands too. <laughs> how, why did they think Between that would segments. work? Because a lot of weightlifters do that. They piss on their hands. <laughs> what? what, what? They, oh yeah, they do because they think for some reason it does toughen your hands up. Uh, I guess I don't. I don't know how they would do that. But... Can you just let that happen accidentally, anyways? <laughs> yeah, Especially your in your guys's like situation. <laughs> I accidentally peed on my own hand. Damn it! <laughs> Doesn't that happen? I assume that happens all the time with you guys. <laughs> I suppose, but Phil, it's great. Great having you on the show as always. It was wonderful to have you on on Friday, and we'll talk to you again this Friday. We'll see you Friday. Yep. Thanks, I'm Phil Mackey, ladies and gentlemen. Score North, Phil Mackey. I really like working with both of those guys. Very, very nice people. That was impressive when he spit out his real housewife knowledge. Mm-hmm. That was impressive. He, uh, so the two of you and he, the three, three out of four watched Real Housewives. Yeah. Is that correct? I, I thought I had to do it for all of us because I don't want you to do it. I have to. I want to step up and be that person. Well, you don't for have us. to worry about it. I ain't going anywhere near it. I know. So I'm good to go. So um, he it did feel like a little bit like he was treading on my territory. Like I don't go <laughs> watching the twins and saying things for him. But okay. Yeah. So what? I can't remember his report. What did he report on again? I forgot. Jen Shaw. Oh, Jen Shaw. Real that's Housewives right. of that's right. Utah, uh, Utah. Oh, speaking of peeing, I sent you a speaking story. Speaking of peeing. <laughs> Because we're talking about peeing, I sent you that story about a guy who was there to at somebody's house to do the pest control. Yeah, and he ended up peeing on their couch. Oh, I saw I saw that headline, but I did not. Is it under news stories? It's yeah, it's in yep. Okay, Guardian. Oh, there you go. Yep, there it is, right there, ladies and gentlemen. I, I got to believe is the guy still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. You pee on my couch when my family's around. That's a, I ain't going to be real happy about it's a, that. It's a very antiquated way to get rid of fleas. Yeah, yeah. apparently. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Just like, did you ever think you'd have to say that sentence? If you pee on my couch, well, yes, I'm right. coming never, for you. I never did. I, you know, Pest control worker caught urinating in the local family's living room, police say. So, of course, this commercial had to pop up, so i got to get rid of that. Uh, Cambria, Colorado. I didn't know. Where's Cambria, Colorado? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. no, excuse me. It's Cambria County, Pennsylvania. That's okay. what it was. Cambria County, Pennsylvania. WJAC. You're listening to the Jack. What do you think? The Jack. Do they call it the Jack? <laughs> sure. I imagine. A local pest control worker has been charged after police say he was caught on camera urinating inside a Cambria County family's living room. Authorities with the Hastings Borough Police Department have filed charges against the owner of Young's Pest Control. He's 67 years old. Roger Young. A 67-year-old guy peed on your couch, for Christ's sake. I, th- I assume the guy was going to be like 18. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah. yeah. I thought he'd be very young. He's 67, for Christ's sake. This is about uh, 50 miles east of Pittsburgh. Oh, there you go. It's over on the west side. There you go. You know, you ever spend any time in Pennsylvania? Mm-mm. Did you ever? No. Nope. Never have? I don't know where the dividing line is, but East Pennsylvania and West Pennsylvania are two completely different countries for Christ. I don't know mm. what age I was to realize that Pittsburgh and Philadelphia were in the same state. 
Well, it happens. Because yeah. you know what I mean? They seem so different when you hear oh, about them. Oh, they're really different. Yeah. Wildly. Yeah, I stayed one night in Erie, Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah, that's, okay. the, that's the closest I've ever come to it, so. Yeah, it's just, it's so weird because you're from Philadelphia, you're from Pittsburgh. Yeah. And that's, I don't think either side, that's not a bad thing. No. It's just they're completely different kinds of people. They feel different. No question about it. I still my favorite Philadelphia story of all times. I went to my buddy Fitz's daughter's wedding in in, Penn, in uh in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. right? In Philadelphia. Okay. And I'm walking past this, this little kind of fenced in park area to the church. And there was a cop leaning up against the fence. It was a female cop. She's leaning up against the fence of the park. And I walk by and I look over and I go, beautiful day, officer. And she looks at me and goes, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 pardon okay. me. My bad. Pardon me that I think it's a beautiful day. I'll never do it again. She sounds like me in the morning. <laughs> well, yeah, that is you in the morning. <laughs> Jesus, you don't go around here in the morning, do you? No, that's why I have a separate room. Oh, God. I have a move. separate room. As if you're so talkative in the morning either. <laughs> Both of you. Yeah, I honestly got to come in here. It's like, is there anybody here? And Nobody's Tom ever wants talking. us to entertain him in the morning. He's mm-hmm. like, come on, tell me a joke. Let's go. <laughs> You got you both got your crab claws out when I walk in. It's really a thrill. No question about it. Yeah, right. That's what I'm gonna do from now on. Hey, good morning, Tom. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> That'll be it from now Paradise. on. Paradise. Okay, back to the piss boy here oh, yeah, for a second. Uh, Sixty seven year old Roger Young, after he allegedly admitted to the incident, which uh, he got arrested, which police say was caught on the family's home surveillance camera. Police uh, I still don't understand. Does everybody have now indoor and outdoor surveillance cameras? I think mo- I think a lot of people have indoor. Do they know? My, you know, uh, we don't. I hate that feeling of no, it. No, I don't. I don't like that either. Um, but uh, I don't like even that. We have like the baby cam to watch her. Sure. Even you have moments where you're like, and I check in on Justin and talk to him through it and stuff. But like, it feels we- it feels weird. But I get I get that people, especially if you have an older person in your home, it's probably best to be able to ch- go check on them. So. I'm Andy's going to be in right toward the end of the show now because we're going to start the family podcast now at 10.15. We're not going to wait an hour because we just sat around for an hour and it was a pain in the ass, so we're going to have them back to back. So when Andy comes in, I want you to tell him you heard the story about when he was, I guess, about 18 months, 19 months old. I walk in, and there was turds wiped all over the back wall. Oh, yeah. so you knew this story. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, it's hunting. The it, story you've told me stuck with me forever because pr- prior to me having kids, you told me a story about a child <laughs> smearing poop yeah. on a wall. Until kids, Brittany was the only one that smeared poop on the yeah, wall. Yeah, until that. Mm-hmm. That was my move. Yeah. But honestly, God, I walk in, he has poop smeared all over the wall just above his crib. Okay? Yeah. And I walk in and I look at it. And I look at him, I have not said a word yet, haven't made a face or anything. And 18, 19, 20 month old Andy looks up at me and goes, son of a bitch. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. It's, uh, whatever. And that's so funny, too, because me and Justin even talked last night. Or, yeah, well, last night. What age do we have to start not swearing around our kid? Yeah, yeah, you have to. And Justin's like, if it's up, to, if it's gonna be, you know, up to you, this baby's gonna come out. The first word she says is gonna be. I was like, all right, we, I get it, I get what you're saying. <laughs> Message received. Uh, we do have to take a break here. We'll come right back. Some uh, a lot of interesting news coming up next, ladies and gentlemen. Right after this. This is the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. If you've been hurt in a car collision, it's traumatic enough. You don't need to waste time and energy on the legal stuff. Think of us as a partner who will guide you through the process. First off, you need to recover, but part of that is getting the compensation you deserve. At Bradshaw and Bryant, we'll work hard so you can get the rest you need during the trying months after a personal injury. At Bradshaw and Bryant, we understand how important it is to make our clients comfortable. So we build each client relationship on the pillars of honesty and transparency. Don't miss out on what's rightfully yours. We'll go to bat for you. For your free case consultation, please visit minnesotapersonalinjury.com. That's minnesotapersonalinjury.com. I'm Mike Bryan. I hope you're never injured in a collision. But if you are, don't sign anything until you've talked to Bradshaw and Bryant. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. With Mike Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. 
As you know, my friend Mike Lindell has a passion to help everyone get the best sleep of your life. He didn't stop by simply creating the best pillow. Mike created the Giza Dream bed sheets. They look and feel great, which means an even better night's sleep for me, which is crucial for my busy schedule. Mike found the world's best cotton. It's called Giza. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. Mike's Giza sheets come with a 60-day money-back guarantee and a 10-year warranty. Giza Dream Sheets come in a variety of sizes and colors. Mike's latest incredible deal is the sale of the year. For a limited time, you'll receive 50% off the Giza Dream Sheets. You'll receive a set for as low as $29.98. Go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio podcast square, and use promo code TOM. There you'll find not only this amazing offer, but also deep discounts on all MyPillow products, including the MyPillow 2.0 mattress topper, my pillow towel sheets and so much more call 800-516-5146 use promo code tom or go to mypillow.com make sure you use the promo code tom Brittany and i just noted well Brittany noticed and i noticed as well <clears throat> that there are um we have detached headphones you can tell but see there's no cord hanging down or any of that stuff uh we just looked there are six pairs of headphones in here and none of them have been put on the charge been charging yeah mm-hmm. why do people do that do they just, I got to go home. I don't have time to charge your it, headphones. You know who it probably was, was the crew for, uh, uh, that came with Jay that didn't even know they had to put them on a charger. There, now that one's charged. You have to make sure the red light's on. Oh, okay, cool. Good to know. And sometimes it doesn't come on. Well, now see, we got headphones that work, so that's good. Because I'm the only one that uses them in here anyway. You and Alex. For this show. Yeah, Alex does for the second show. Are Alex we, and I use Oh, no, does she use this one? Yeah, she doesn't even use those. All right, we're fine. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Because this week, like you mentioned, is pretty cool. You guys are kicking off the family show at 1015. 1015 is going to be from 1015 to 1115. And And to make up for the missing hour there, we're going to uh, do a show on Friday, too. Because as long as it's as long as it's over by eleven fifteen on a Friday, even I got no problem with that. That's awesome. I would not want to work till like two in the afternoon on a Friday, though. No. <clears throat> you know. I don't think many people. Every time we talk about this, we get a bunch of emails. A lot of companies will do summer Fridays. Um, oh yeah, that's what summer I hear. hours on Friday. That's so what, it's so like, you get off at noon. Because mentally, if you're in a bit like a, a like a a desk job, you're mentally done at like noon on Fridays anyway so they might as well get credit for it <clears throat> I would have I got to check this out I, is this, if this is true I got to find out where the hell this happened DNR kills bear roaming around in North Minneapolis I thought I like, died what? I saw this so I you found this You saw the bear? Well, I, no I saw this story I found it on a national news site really? and I was like shocked I didn't hear anything about this locally no, I don't know where this was. I'm going to scroll down and find out where it was. But that bear was in danger. I can promise you that. <laughs> I tell a bear, you don't want to be wandering around North Minneapolis in people's backyards. You're going to get shot, you dumb bastard. All right, here we go. We're going to find out where it is. Uh, the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources fatally shot. Oh, they did kill the bear. I knew that he was going to get shot. They fatally shot a black bear police had been tracking as it moved through a residential area in North Minneapolis on Sunday morning. Around 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, a Minneapolis police spokesman said officers were monitoring the bear, which had been wandering around North Minneapolis, and were working with the Department of Natural Resources. Now, a question I have for maybe you guys would know this. How would a bear get there? Is they going down railroad tracks or something? Is that how they do it? I don't know. So, like, you lived right on the cusp of North Minneapolis and Golden Valley there. Our, it, right oh, my the, last house, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're, when you yep. lived in Golden Valley. And did you guys ever get bears in, like, Theo no. Park? No. I didn't think, because I ran no. Theo Park constantly, and I never saw a bear. I saw dead hookers in the in the Bassett's Creek. I did see Which, that. you know, they're <laughs> same, same thing. Not the greatest, but, mm-hmm. you know. I, those are equal interchangeable. Bear or dead hooker. <laughs> Photos taken by Minneapolis resident Philip Murphy and posted to Facebook showed the animal moving through Cottage Park. Where's Cottage Park? Is that the one right off? It's between Plymouth and Golden Valley Road. And what would the cross street be like? Xerxes? Not I Xerxes. No maybe. idea. Maybe it is Xerxes. Uh, the photo taken by Minneapolis resident Phil Murphy posted Cottage Park. Uh, another image showed an officer using a drone to monitor it. Images posted to Twitter appear to show the animal scaling a fence and sitting on somebody's front porch. <laughs> like you walk out your front door and there's a bear sitting on your porch. Okay, I found Cottage Park. It's over off West Broadway, and it's near, gosh, North Commons Park, just north of it. Oh, so it's there. Yeah. 
There's like a little. It's right by North High, where North High School used to be. Yes. Yep. North Community. It's about two blocks away from oh North. Oh my God! There's right in the a, heart. There's like a sliver of a park there that they call Cottage oh, Park. Oh yeah, I see it now. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. How hmm. the hell did a bear get that far into a neighborhood? I don't know. I assume it was right on the edge of like the Theaterworth Park and all that stuff. Uh, he had to come up through the park. I'm assuming, right? Maybe he had a like a bus pass. He had a bus pass. Got on the bus. God, there's a guy taking a left at a light, and the bear's walking right at him. That would terrify me. <laughs> and bears are one of those things, and eagles are like this, too. You don't realize how big they are until you see them in person. Oh, God, I like, bet. We had a big eagle land in our backyard and was, like, eating a rabbit, and I went to let my dogs out. And I'm telling you, when you realize that wingspan is taller than you, you're just like, you're frozen. Oh, God, yeah. Like, And bears are the same way. When you see them in person, you're like, holy cripes. God, when Catherine and I got married, we went up to Banff, Canada for our, our honeymoon. And I've always wanted to play Banff Golf Course. I guess it's magnificent. Never got a chance to play it because we flew in from our honeymoon. We're up at Banff. I'm going to go play a round of golf. Yeah. Guy says, I'm sorry, the golf course is closed. And I said, closed? It's a beautiful day. Yeah. He goes, I'm sorry, the, 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 the golf course is closed. And I'll tell you why, but you can't tell anybody else. I said, Okay. He said a young man from Asia was walking through the golf course before it opened this morning, and a bear took his head off. <gasps> like it hit him so hard, it literally tore his neck open. And so where you're like, well, can I play the back nine? Yeah, how about the back nine? I'll just <laughs> skip that hole. That'd be fine. That's terrible. That's, oh, that's. Well, you don't want to walk up on a bear with a camera. Probably not a good idea. The thing is, okay, so my dad, he lives in Montana and we go there once a year and you know we were by no means me and my brother and sister had any so they there's like these two arguments of if they had they sell those sticks that have the bells on them oh, for yeah, people sure. yeah. to like alert bears <clears throat> But if it's a grizzly, they're so unpredictable. You don't know if that's actually then yeah. giving them a heads up like yep. here's the prey. They call them like dinner bells. Or if it's so it's one of those things like black bear and brown bears have more predict predictability and don't want to attack you. But grizzly bears, they've like yet to figure out what you should do. Should you stand up, act dead, run away, not? They don't actually know. Yeah. They give advice, but they're like, we don't. It's like fitty yeah. fitty chance that this the grizzly's just gonna be like, nah, murder. Mm -hmm. We've only got a couple minutes to go. You want me to go with the top five phrases young people use or rule of thumb? Cut the mustard. Okay, so we either go with the young person phrases or like our old tried and true. What would you rather do? Where's old tried and true? That's Where's the one that? that the cut the mustard one. Oh, that's like, the cut the yeah. What, Rudy, you have a preference? Yeah, uh, fr phrases. Okay. Sure. Top five phrases young people. Yeah, yeah, that'll time out really well anyway. Uh, top five phrases young people use that the rest of us don't get. Sure, Gen Z doesn't understand a lot of phrases we use, but trust us, it goes both ways. See what we mean with today's list of the top five phrases young people use the rest of us just don't get. Uh, fam is short for family. Well, you knew that. Yeah, mm -hmm. The fam, I've heard the fam before. Dank, which means something is excellent or very high quality. I don't know dank. Did you know dank? I knew dank. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you? Okay. How about salty? Bad. Angry, yeah. Yeah. No, it says jealous here. Yeah, like jelly. You're salty, yeah. So you're salty because mm. you're jealous. You're yeah. not just pissed off. Yeah. Because I always heard salty as being pissed off. Yeah, salty is like... I would say, yeah, I would fall into like jelly, want what they want. You're just salty. Like that, you're saying that only because you're salty. Big yikes. It's what you say after you do something really embarrassing. Yeah, that's that just saying big yikes is embarrassing. So that's good. Mortifying. Uh, boogie, which means extravagantly fancy. Oh, like bougie. bougie. That's it's bougie. bougie. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I thought that's it was okay. Boogie. I was like, all right. Yeah, it means extravagantly fancy, which is why nobody who listens to this show will ever hear. Oh, that's nice. Ouch. Okay, yeah, let's not write jokes at the end of stuff. We'll, we'll handle it, all right? You don't need to write jokes in there, wise brother. Uh, living rent-free, describe something you obsess over. Coincidentally, it also describes whatever, uh, no, no, more jokes, sorry. Yeah, well, we know what living rent-free is. Yeah, living rent-free. Uh, ghosting, it means to stop communicating. We knew that one. Mm -hmm. And finally, simp, uh, it's someone who pays way too much attention to another person. Well, yeah. I don't understand, what, what do you mean? Like, if you simp over somebody, it's, like, stand for them. It's being an extreme fan. If you simp, you're, like, it's, like, have, it's, like, I love, I simp so hardcore over, like, an OnlyFans person. I give them a lot of money. I'm there. I, I simp yeah. over them. Yeah. Just once again, though, we'll close with this because it's a good place to close because they tried to be funny. Mm -hmm. Simp, it's someone who pays way too much attention to another person. 
It's a good way to describe your liberal friend to your lip. Describe your liberal friend. This is written very poorly. It's a good way to describe your liberal friend about Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh, what does that even mean? Like I, they're, they're obsessed with him. But I don't understand. To your liberal friend about your liberal friend. What are you doing here? I think they're it's saying that like clear. most, at the, especially during the, his presidency, they seemed to, like they were obsessed with him. Everything he did. Well, they kind of still are, aren't they? Yeah. About both Biden and Trump, they're just obsessed with that stuff. If that's what you're, if 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 you're extreme either side, of course you're going to be obsessed. I have a question. Do you think you guys, the two of you, do you think either one of them will end up being president again? I just, I don't care. No, I, I know you. Well, you should. I don't care. Think, it's hard to imagine tr- Trump. But at the same time, I had a hard time imagining him being president the first time. <laughs> well, either one of them. Yes. No. And I mean, so I don't, I don't. And if, like, honestly, I know this is bad, but, like, if Biden wants to be, pre- okay, I don't, I don't even care. I don't care who, just don't talk to well, me. I, Please don't be in the headlines constantly. Let me forget your president. That'd That's be good. See, I, I agree with you 100%. Back off, both of you. Back off, for yeah. Christ's sake. Yeah. All right, you hun yucks. That's enough working with you pills. Oh, yes. I'm Time off. I'm fed up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk Bye. to you tomorrow. Thanks.